You know when you're pretty sure you have the flu and so you're scared to fart because at any moment you could shit yourself? Yes. Mm-hmm. That is the title of my biography these days. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, you know, trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things about me or about poop and stuff. Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Oh, man, what's this right here? Is this, this a podcast about poop? And now, the Hey, Poopy podcast with Dave and Ellen. Yay! Hey, everybody, we're here. We're here. It's freezing in New York, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year's! Oh yes, it is the New Year. Um, this is episode forty-nine, but it'll always be number two. And it's Hey Poopy podcast with Dave and Ellen. And um, we have an awesome, awesome, awesome episode in store for you. Yeah, it's our year in rear view. <laughs> <laughs> I can never say that. I just wind up saying a, year in review. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Our year in rear view rear with our view. super fan. Rose. That's me, Rose Martin. Yes. Woo! Thanks for coming on. Super fan. <laughs> Super fan indeed. We, Rose always sends me the best news stories. Yes. The best like memes, just anything related to poops and farts. It's yes. always on point. Yes. So uh, thanks for coming on the show, by the way. My, truly my pleasure. Aww. It's a smooth number four of <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and no, uh, Rose has a ton of, a uh, shit ton of notes, so. You know we love our notes on proper note cards, yes, like on actual like a note pro. cards. Like you're in like taking a auditing a class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. what's that? Are those gifts? Yeah, that's a little sneak preview. Oh, uh, there'll be gifts later. Oh, okay, oh. cool, yeah. nice, perfect. Yeah, we're taping this before Christmas, but you guys will hear it on New Year's Day. So happy 2020, 2020 everybody. The double deuce. So peeking behind the curtain there. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Yep. So, uh, yeah. But again, thanks again for being on the show. Yeah. And, Love um, it. And because we check in with our guests first, you're our guest. How your poops been? Today, especially, I think just because I knew that this was coming, I had a... <laughs> do, actually, let me see the, the, the chart. I mean, I know the chart, but where's the oh, yeah, actual, the real what? chart? It was between a four and a five. It was a little oh, a little softer than a perfectly right. formed four. It wasn't the smooth was, criminal. But it, it was, was one like, of those where it just empties you out and you feel like a little smaller, yeah. a little like like your ab muscles tighten up a little bit. Like we're Like, we're good. Oh, here we go. Here's the actual chart. So it was like between a four and a five, a little bit broken. I call that a four four and a half. A four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still like to call it a four, but it's a little looser of a four. Yeah. And my my movements are uh, very stress related. So normally I would have had a second one by now. But I think because I was so excited about this, my body's like, my body's like, not yet. You're back loading that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not got to hold on. Well, you you can use the bathroom here if need (laughs) need be. (laughs) We love when people poop while we're I don't think we had any guests that actually pooped. Like here. I think we had one once. We had one. I think we had a couple that like pooped. Even like they came in, pooped, yeah. and then we started recording. Oh, okay. I know. I like in my mid episode P have squeezed out a turd or two here and there. Yes, you have. Yeah. Not not every time. Not but every time. It is. It it does happen. The only thing I've never done on the air in our fifty plus episodes at this point, forty nine episodes, is I've never farted. Hmm. Interesting. For how gassy of a person I feel like I you did once, maybe after the show. I it think. was li- It's always after. Yeah. It's never during. You get the game. You get the game face on. Yeah. Game, game butt on. Game guts. Game yeah. guts. <laughs> <laughs> my sphincter is so tight. How have your poops been recently, Dave? Oh, might have been. I don't think I've even gone to the bathroom yet today. What? Have I gone to the bathroom? It today? is late in the day. I people. know. I um. I've Dang. been trying this intermittent fasting thing where I eat like later, and so I have like. So you're intermittent it. pooping yes. too. Yes. So like usually I start eating around noon during the week and then I stop eating around like seven thirty eight, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it hasn't really thrown my movements off that much. But I think today I don't know who knows I was I just was shot off a cannon. I don't think I went to the bathroom today. I'm a first thing yeah, I didn't. or day ruined. And no, yeah, me too. I'm yeah. usually right out of the right out of the bed. 
I'm like on that toilet, but I don't think I've even gone today. So, but yesterday I am I had beyond like a, surprised with you because you know. are I'm pretty regular. You're an always pooper. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, I went to see Star Wars last night, Ooh. and um, I had popcorn. I dreaded popcorn, and I'm surprised that I didn't like you know rip anything when I got home. I just went straight to bed. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's brewing. But um, so there's something. There's something happening. That's going to happen Maybe later today. Maybe it'll happen to you right now mm. over recording. I don't think so. Oh. I well. mean, you know, never know. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> 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 a boy could dream. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But the last thing I remember was probably like a five, six. Oh. I feel like my farts and poops have been like really ultra stinky. <laughs> Because you're like more vegetarian these days. Well, that well, I think it's that, and it mixed in like um, you went to this really nice French restaurant, mm. and I think that's still like lingering somehow. I don't know how, but it's just like <laughs> the richness I think is coming out. If you've been eating one way and you take yeah. a cheat meal, it yeah. can the fuck you the up. repercussions will last more than twelve hours. Yeah, so I think I'm getting you know some uh, post uh, French meal. Yeah. Gaseousness. <laughs> I'm eating on the podcast. What else is new? <laughs> um, I have a very busy day where I left the house and I won't be back till much later. So I have to figure out my meals. Um, but I did poopy today, but it was like, it was like mid coffee. I felt like it was like really going to like come on strong. And then I pinched out these teeny tiny little fours i don't even know if i could even call it a four but they were like sounds like one elongated ones yeah (laughs) it was like so sad and i was like really that was it so i feel like there's more left in me but um i did make a massive dump yesterday that like passed the water Mm -hmm. so maybe i'm just like (laughs) i cleaned it out yesterday but i did eat a pile of popcorn last night then i went to kanji village which i love um, I've been there in a minute. I ate a lot of green beans and broccoli and like all this healthy. Oh, so there's there's going to be some massive shit coming. Yeah, there's a fiber fiesta pipe. heading in my oh, way. Or and not. I'm, and I'm eating veggie soup right now. Um, I in. had maybe my. If you'll sit your pants or uh, shit. <laughs> take a shit during mid show. <laughs> yeah, poop my pants. I also am about to get my period. So I feel like sometimes my period either constipates me or I have explosive diarrhea. So it's like. Oh my God, it's literally imagine. a crapshoot. Uh, oh but, god I couldn't imagine yeah. um, But I'm eating veggie soup right now And for breakfast this morning I had my steel cut oatmeals with chia seeds and apple Like if that isn't like 10 grams of fiber right there I don't know what's going on Yeah well there's a, Later today I imagine there'll be a big Like oatmeal is like the big best explosion. Like rotor rooter fiber Of your Really, I, I hate oatmeal so much oh, oh. I hate it too And it's weird I like grits which is kind of similar consistency, too. but I hate oatmeal. I just oh, never I got into it. it. I make it steel cut in the pressure cooker. Mm-hmm. Not fucking instant shit. I want the OG Irish shit. Yeah. Um, and then I put a little bit of almond milk, maple syrup, shaved coconut, apples, and chia seed. Oh my God. I wouldn't eat any of that. Oh my God. So good. <laughs> I, I've oh heard Ellen describe her meals and I'm always like, I eat opposite of anything that ellen is like won't eat that today i'll be i'll just like walk behind her and be like i'll eat it like, yeah, I'll, eat that. I'll have that today <laughs> i'll have that I eat. I eat weirdly pretty freaking healthy you eat healthy you do for the, being I as constipated not. i am yeah. it makes no sense well that's why because my body rewards me for my unhealthy eating <laughs> it, it just dumps true. it out it just has to get out of it you. loves it it loves the bad it's like an exorcism foods. except like i have some things i eat the the low carb high fat right so if i slip up and eat something that's a healthy carb i understand that it's healthy my body is like what the hell are you doing to us you ate an apple you ate an apple like all angry and i'm like i'm sorry i'll put more bacon on top of you later i'm sorry i ate a lot of fruit and i still i don't know it's weird like i just feel like my poops have not been um the normal uh it's kind of weird but oatmeal we'll never eat that Oh, I love I've tried oatmeal. it so many times, but you know, whatever. I love steel steel cut. You have to listen to your body and yeah. But then again, it's like, I feel like I didn't even really get into yogurt until like a few years ago. Oh, I love yogurt. And then now I'm like, how the yogurt. fuck did I not eat yogurt? So who knows? Maybe I'll be like a total oatmeal freak. By Maybe like I'll make you year. some of my steel cut. I've had them all different ways yeah. every full, time. Full fat The same yogurt. thing with tomatoes too. Like raw tomatoes. They're like, you got to try these tomatoes. These no. cherry tomatoes. And every time I'm like, it tastes like a fucking tomato. <laughs> 
don't like, yeah, same. Although I like salsa. But anyway, you know, it's not a food podcast. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's the other end. This is our year in rear review. Well, yeah. we like to talk about food that helps push it all through. True. I, I mean, like, like corn week, is the funniest food to eat for poops. Yeah. Just wrecks me. Last week I made the mistake. I know it's a mistake I've made before. I don't know what I thought would happen. I had one of those bars that has the malatol in it. I was oh. I don't know it's what that a is. fake sugar. It's not good for you. I oh, know this, I and people have reactions to it that vary. And my reaction is extreme gas for days. Really? And I'm like, the day, the next day, and the day after that, I'm like, what did you think would happen? Did you hear Laura Lee Pants' yeah. episode? Yeah, like, same. she has the same problem. She loves her bars. I love them too. It's and obvious uh, that I look at the ingredients, and I looked before I ate it, and I'm like, I'll be fine. I was not fine. <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't know. Um, that's really weird. I'd never heard of that before. Malatol. If you eat, like, they make it a sweetener for diabetics specifically, oh, right? Okay. So it's zero calories. It's supposed to not affect your blood sugar, but it can affect many other systems in your body. And it's not, it's to be taken. I mean, honestly, avoid it if you can. It's not. Is stevia good. bad for diabetics? Stevia is okay for diabetics. Because yeah. I was like, Everything should be stevia. All those fake sugars are so bad for you on so many levels. Yeah. Stevia is the only one that the it's like natural. Yeah, the zero calorie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about stevia either. I stopped using a lot. Of stuff. I just use like we have sugar in the raw. I barely even use sugar in anything. But when I do, it's usually like baking. Yeah, but I yeah. hate stevia. But there's a study that it's good for Lyme disease. Mm. Oh really? Yeah. So I've been putting that shit in my coffee. Oh my god. And sucking it up. Yeah. <laughs> But malatol yeah. is the one that you I can't wait till I get some text it. that's gonna say like, "Oh my god!" So look, it's gonna sound weird, but I'm drinking horse piss because now <laughs> it's really good with Lyme disease. I know it sounds insane. <laughs> Knowing my dumbass, yes, that would happen. You're gonna be like, "Oh man, it's pretty good," but my skin's turning really weird, oddly yellow. <laughs> um, I'm jaundiced from all the horse pee pee. Oh my god. So um, <laughs> let's get let's get into some of this uh, best of, if you the will, year yes. in rear view. Um, Rose, really quick, do you want to talk about yourself and who you are and how you became a super fan? Of course. Uh, my name is Rose Rose Martin. Uh, I'm a visual artist, and I know Dave and Ellen from the burlesque scene in New York City. I do uh, sometimes I do live drawing of the acts, uh, but Rose mostly, is a very accomplished illustrator. Thank you. I'm not nearly as good as Dave. Dave is a true visual I can't, artist. Well, I can't but, draw for shit. So but you're an artist. <laughs> it's not you know. Yeah, it's more than that. I'll take it. But yeah, you're really, <laughs> that thing you did yesterday with the um, oh the Cool Ranch Doritos. Yes. <laughs> so funny. Um, but uh, mostly I'm a super fan of burlesque and live entertainment and cabaret in New York City also. And um, I heard about this this podcast pretty late. You guys were many, many episodes in when I first heard about it. And I was like, that's hilarious. I love that <laughs> stuff. And I pounded about 20 episodes in a row. Like, you binged us. I nice. binged it. And it was, this is the best gift. <laughs> it was very strange because I got to tell you, then I would see Dave at things at like, you know, barbecues or, yeah. or events and stuff. And I'd be like, oh, my best friend Dave is here. He talks to me for an hour a day in my <laughs> ear. <laughs> and then I had to remember that that was my experience but today I am talk I'm talking directly to you Rose every time but I felt like we were a lot I felt like a little bit like you were Mr. Rogers and I watch you on the TV every day and therefore we're friends and it's like yeah. oh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's a separation there, oh my God. and uh, yeah, no, I just really. You guys were it. friends before, we were, yeah, but yeah. Not, not you talking would... for an hour a day. Like your brain gets those, um, you know, those input, the data points. Why do I get like, that? Like you listen yeah. to any anything consistently, you think like, oh shit, it's like it's part of your daily routine. You know, kids really so. think that Mr. Rogers is talking to them and that they are friends. Like it's that it's a two way street. He's, he was a true genius. He was, yeah, and so are you, and oh. so yeah. are you, Alan. Yes, but Rose, you and I didn't meet until after. After the podcast, and I remember the Correct. first time we met was at, um, I think, Branded Saloon, and mm -hmm. you came up to me, and you are just like, hee, and I was like, <laughs> nice to meet you, well, and I Dave was like, no, work. no, no, she's cool, she's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I had known your work before and admired it, but yeah, we had, I didn't, like, have the balls, I guess, to, to approach you until... Not until you knew what my asshole did. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful <laughs> asshole, as that one doctor told She's you. She's got lots of powers. <laughs> you have no idea, this asshole's been through the ringer. <laughs> Literally. 
Oh, I love it. One of the one of my favorite things is when um, over the, this past summer, at a friend's barbecue, um, Rose was wearing this orgasm donor T shirt that right. I thought was the funniest <laughs> fucking thing ever. <laughs> It's so good. You're a giver, right? That got a lot of likes on my Instagram feed. Yeah. <laughs> was it the same barbecue I brought my dad to? Yes. I think it oh, was. That's hilarious. It was. Yeah. It was a funny barbecue. Was There's funny. a lot of interesting things going on that day. <laughs> yeah, I did. I just handed my dad like a huge plate of meat and he was like, I can't eat all this food and he totally polished it off. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the cold cuts. <laughs> oh God, cold cuts. That's a, uh, my father-in-law loves cold cuts. Which yeah, it's like I weird, but it. um, yes. So Rose is awesome. Yeah, so I'm a super fan, and I went through in anticipation of this. Can I say some of my highlights? From yes, the, let's from go the, into please, it. Let's get into it. The year in rear view. <laughs> uh, let's so do it. one of my top stories is definitely Ellen's dad walking around the Met, the Metropolitan <laughs> Museum of Art in New York City, one of the most world Jerry. famous. <laughs> Jerry just walking around <laughs> farting openly. <laughs> it's just my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look at that Rembrandt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, no, and <laughs> insanely loud in these pretty quiet galleries. And there's at least 20 people in there talking like this. Oh, I love that piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was just like, Dad. Which reminds me, um, I, fr- I have a friend who works at the Met, and during the running episode, I talked about this. I text him, oh, yes. has anybody ever pooped? In the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And he said, he said, I just heard from one of my security friends. Two years ago, they found a human poop inside the temple of Dendor. <laughs> no, in the temple? In the temple. And I said, the can I talk about that on the podcast? And he said, sure, it's fine. I think the poop was from a disgruntled employee who had worked the graveyard shift. I believe it. So for those of you who don't know, the Met has a very large, ample uh, atrium room that has a real antique from Egypt that's a real temple. That you're not allowed to go inside. You're not allowed to go inside. And it's like a little tunnel situation. It would have to be an employee. It would have to be. That's horrifying. Yeah. Or someone someone, a dare. Yeah. Yeah, And if anybody listening has never been to the Met, there's literally four security guards per room minimum. On like every single wall. Oh yeah, you can't you can't get away with something like that unless you work there. Yeah, inside job. Yes. <laughs> good. So there's a, good a lot one. of farts and poops happening forget, at the I Met. For, I forgot about that one, <laughs> Jerry. Jerry didn't poop, uh, shit in the temple. He just openly <laughs> farted, kept walking, people moving oh away. Yep. And then at the Brooklyn Museum the next day, <laughs> love it. Kept just blasting them off. I truly love that. Oh and I was God. like, good to know what being in your late seventies, early eighties is all about. Not yeah. giving two shits about literally popping I mean, off. At that farts. point, it's like, it's like I gotta go. I'm not holding this in anymore. Yeah, it's serious. <laughs> well, I do have two age-related poop stories, oh. which are oh, please. When I worked at Aeropostal in the Quaker Bridge Mall in New Jersey, an elderly gentleman came in, kind of a little bit shy, and said, "Do you sell undergarments here?" And we said, n- 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 no, maybe maybe Sears or Macy's. And he's like, and he just goes and gets jeans instead and tries them on and walks out. Oh, my God. With the jeans. And we all understand exactly what has happened here. And so we have to, like, draw lots to who's going to go in that dressing room. And it was just like, we had a very frank discussion with the manager. I mean, we were all in college. We we're all the same age. So it wasn't like, <laughs> but we were like, they pay you more. You're going to do it. And he just got a garbage bag. Went in there, didn't even look at any of the things that the clothing that were left over mm-hmm. and just put them directly in the trash bag. And we just never spoke about it again. Wow. That is evil. I though. mean, it was very tragic, right? It is. But OK, we all know it literally shit happens. It but re- <laughs> but really, you should ha- be like, hey, I'm going into this dressing room. Can I have a garbage bag? You should just be disposing of it. Not employees yeah. working at a mall for less than minimum weight. Ah! Yeah. So the other story I have is I'm at a bar and there's an elderly gentleman like two stools away from me. A stool is an appropriate term for me to use here. And he has like the, the old man chinos on that have like the cuff, right? That are like high and um, you know like LL Bean or something. And he, uh, he, he like pays like maybe a little too quickly and I'm just noticing that he's like maybe a little nervous because I'm looking out of the corner of my eye and I'm like, that's a little weird and he goes directly out the door and as he's passing the threshold uh, a perfect 
marble of a turd rolls out of the cuffed Chena. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Holy the bartender shit. lock eyes and we're like, what just happened? And she like knew his name. So, but it's the same situation where he knows this bartender. He's obviously a regular. She had to clean it up. This is, of course, tragic and embarrassing, but, sir, you made someone else clean up after you. Maybe it was... What is that? What the fuck is that? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I would have run out the door like, hey, you left something behind. Hey, sir, did you forget something? Or even, (laughs) are you okay? Are you done? Like, do we need to call a doctor? Are there any more turds coming out? Exactly. Oh, my God. Did he go down the rest of the block dropping more? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure. Oh, my God. That's my worst nightmare. Yeah. I would never go to that bar again. Age will come to all of us. I have gone to that bar since, and I, like, step over the (laughs) threshold. (laughs) Yeah. It's gone. I know that. (laughs) In my mind. Yeah. You're like, it's still there. there. It's still there. Yeah. The remnants are still there. It's true. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Not good. That's a good one, though. Yeah. (laughs) So should I do some more of my stories? Because okay, I have yeah, a con- we, I have a confession could, to make. I I don't feel qualified to be on this podcast. No, stop! stop. You you've it, already right in like well, you're two on it. minutes. Guess what? You're on it. I'm on it now. <laughs> no, but in two minutes, you've just delivered some gold. So yeah. Thank you. yeah. But I have never, as an adult, shit my pants. I okay. know the the look of disappointment on these two faces. Okay. If no, we just think you're a liar. <laughs> I never have. I've had like now, what are we? Now, where, where, that, what's, no, I've had what's the cut? What are we were, saying? When, when are we saying adulthood starts? Really, like the twenties? Uh, are we saying because like I'm I'm gonna say by anywhere between twenty two to now? No, I think puberty to now. Puberty to now? Yeah, because shitting your pants in high school is mortifying no it's it's totally mortifying but i'm just going by like adult like you know i meant like as a child like ever since i was like i peed my pants i've had pee accidents but i've never shat in my pants or had an emergency like 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 you know pants or floor never hey had well 2020 like man things are- i know i just jinxed it i jinxed it but i do this have be here you're always <laughs> welcome have, back on i have two <laughs> stories about toilets though that are nightmare stories that i feel make up for never yes having please my pants so uh we we live we're new yorkers here i live in brooklyn also i rented an apartment that i really love i saw it at least three times before I signed the lease. And I don't know how I missed this. Uh, I get in there when I'm, it's moving day now. I moved in, the movers are here, and I go into the bathroom to like, you know, put the box of bathroom stuff, I guess, in there. And I look in and I'm like, what the hell? How did, what? So the, it's a tiny ridiculous bathroom, which I did remember. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I had gone in there on one of the visits to test the water pressure because my life is, would be ruined if there were bad water pressure in my apartment. I would not rent it, right? So I like turned it on real fast, like super strong. I was like, great, like let's sign the lease. I must have walked right past the toilet, which was essentially nestled into the wall, like with a hole in the drywall. I have a picture. It's a little hard to explain. So it's like kind of carved like an alcove Someone has cut, roughly cut an alcove for the toilet tank. (laughs) Too. We'll put this on Instagram. Oh my god! You can see that the the tank of the toilet doesn't fit in the space the photo, where the toilet goes. The photo and Rosa the whole is, lid is like yeah. cockeyed. The whole, the whole lid is off to it's the like side. They, they, they mismeasured oh. the room. But even the where they like you, you, to flush it, you have to reach inside the hole. You have to go into the drywall to flush it. Oh you have to god. jam your hand into a dark. You don't know what rats and bugs yeah. are in there to flush Ooh. the toilet. And I was like, Tiny I, would I'd, not be into that. I'd, I was like, what the hell do I do? So I became an expert very fast in alternate because you can't like remove the wall where it is. That's not, that was where the plumbing for the shower yeah. was. It was like never going to happen. So I started researching alternate toilet tanks and there are many for like ships and RVs and oh, yeah. other things. And I'm like, I found you guys one. It's this many dollars. Can we, I'm not going to live here like this can you get the super and it took like two weeks of me like berating them and I am the best tenant in the world this is the first time I've ever put my foot down but they did come and replace the toilet tank it's amazing and I'm like what did they give you one of those ones that are like up by the ceiling with the chain that was what I had pictured originally but it's, it's a more modern version of that it's just like the exact width of the toilet 
itself, you know, oh, like oh, instead solution. of solution. Like, nice, yeah. I like it. Oh, Do you have a picture of that? I want to see the I, new. I can send one, yeah, because yeah. it's now my toilet. But so that's the good ending story. There's also a bad ending story. I thought you were going to say when you were putting the um, boxes into the bathroom, there was a giant shit in there <laughs> <laughs> from the movers or something. <laughs> It's well, like, that, oh that does tie into the next oh, story. Nicely. No, I would thought she was going to say there was no toilet. <laughs> oh my god! And then like she was like, "Wait, hole. where's the toilet?" And they were like, "Oh, by the way, it's down." Because I had new friends who had apartments where the shower was in their kitchen and the toilet was down the hall. They yeah. had to leave the apartment <laughs> oh. and go to a closet down the hall. Yeah, that's a that's a style and, like, of New York apartment. Yeah, or and one, I remember asking him like, "Do you the... pee in the shower at late at night?" Because he's a dude, and mm-hmm. he's like, "Yeah, all the time." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or the one New York City style one where they have the it's a yeah it's got the shower like in the kitchen in the but kitchen. the toilets in there as well uh-huh. i've heard that too i've never yeah. seen one but i've heard about that oh, ridic- yeah no there was definitely one when i was shopping for that apartment that was in williamsburg really nice and weirdly affordable and i'm like that's weird and i went through the pictures and like the last one was a toilet like in the middle of a rec room and with no anything around it and i was just like mm, okay well, that explains why this is so cheap in williamsburg i get that <laughs> <laughs> okay so the bad story some of your guests before have noted the style of toilet that i don't know the name of it but it comes directly out of the wall oh yeah yeah like the water does yes yes yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Pipe, yes. you kind of see them in more like They're commercial more, buildings yeah, exactly. like with the, the the seat part of it the 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 throne part of it is just directly attached to the wall and you could mop under it is the purpose of it I imagine yeah yes. and there's no tank and there's no tank yeah mm-hmm. and you sit on it and uh, you might have a little fear that you're like how secure is this yes that's my fear <laughs> so I am here to tell you that that fear is founded <laughs> oh no my parents uh, and I we lived all over the world when I was little and I've used all kinds of toilets. And in one of the most industrialized places we ever lived, which was Denmark, we had this apartment uh, and it was very early in our stay there, maybe like the second or third day that we had moved in. And I was a hefty gal, right? I was a bigger gal than we, if you're a little bit bigger, maybe you're even more paranoid about such things, right? And I was paranoid about this. And uh, I was told... You know, like, it's, of course, it's fine. This is like, you know, a modern apartment. It's not old. It's not like, you'll, you're, you're being silly. <laughs> so I use the toilet and it's a number two and um, I am removing myself from it and I, it drops out from under me a little bit. Oh my, oh God. my God. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. The one and thing. I, 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 I think it was like a double flusher or something because I like, I like got the rest of the way off and I like finished up and I, you know, got to, you know, and I flushed again. And as I flush it, it, it fell off the wall and onto the floor. Oh, so was there water going everywhere? Water everywhere. My mother knew the valve trick oh, from good. evil hate monkey. And so she did that and we called a plumber and he said, uh, like, I can fix this. It wasn't installed correctly. They're supposed to be graded for like, you know, 400 pounds or something like that. And he's like, is there, was it when you went, was it a number one or a number two? And I was like, I just peed. <laughs> I was, I was 14 or 15. Oh, of course. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> I was like, I just peed. No, I totally just peed. And, um, oh no. But did he find the turd? He found it. Oh. He did. <laughs> He did. He's like she he, lied. In in she removing lied. it and putting it or putting the new one in, I forget which, but in like in the pipe, it was not uh, <laughs> there. It didn't make it all the way out. So, um, um, you learn from the. I mean, you were younger when this story happened, but you've learned from those older gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Turds, you can't hide turds. You can't hide turds. <laughs> They'll find you. <laughs> they will find it. <laughs> <laughs> turds are not invisible. Boop, boop. No, you Farts can't. might be, but because in my head I was like, like so I, flushed. The turd. I flushed. I definitely flushed. I think I flushed twice. I will lie to him and tell him that it was just pee. It was not just pee. No, no. Yeah, look, buddy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I took a massive shit, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I mean, it was a big one because I remember. I think it was a double <laughs> flusher. So it was oh my like, god, and maybe that was related to the system's failure. I, but in my they're mind, like, whoa. This Danish system's like, what, what? I'm not used to these American style it, shits. And, you know, <laughs> Europeans are so much smaller and, and like more dainty, I guess. But it was very much like I'm ashamed of my body and myself. Aww. And and also like don't I be mean, ashamed fuck well, it like the normal human shame that comes with of course me, look of pooping it's just like 
all solidified. Like you did it. You broke the toilets. Yeah. Oh, that you that broke would it, it would have crushed me a little bit. <laughs> like <laughs> if I had to like have my mom come in and turn up a valve and then get like a plumber the, to come in and ask me if I took a shit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why he asked. Like. I mean, <laughs> he probably was like, "Is there an Easter egg in here?" Exactly. Oh, He's like, "Am I yes, going to open this thing is. up? There's going to be shit flying off towards me." <laughs> but like, if I say yes or no, does that change the next steps that but you're going to take? Again, he's a plumber. He's he literally seen everything. He's, he's seen probably it like, all. He, "Look, he's like sitting down. He's like, look, you know, it's no big seen deal. It all. Just let me know." Yeah. It's like Commodore when he had the gloves on above his elbow to get into sewer pipes. And he's Oof. like, yeah, I've been elbow deep in people's shit. Oh. But then he described that one toilet and he was like, I'm not touching that to you clean it. Yeah. I was like, that's how, I mean, you've been elbow deep in, in sewer muck. pipes, but you won't touch that kind of dirty toilet. You don't even need to see a picture of that. You I, know how bad that is. I kind of want to see a picture of it. But, <laughs> but yes, it's gotta be disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. And I do remember that this plumber like set it aside <laughs> and did his job and then it was ours to clean up, which is entirely appropriate, I yeah. feel. Absolutely. Yeah. He's like, we're all done here. I'm not cleaning. And, that, and he just like pushed it into a corner and was like, I did my job. And I'm like, I actually have no, that's good for him. Good boundaries. Right. Yeah. He's not there. He to put police, uh, out there. Put police no. tape around it. <laughs> no, we interviewed a plumber. He's touched poo. Of course he has. But no. only only when necessary. Right. Those Danes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Oh my god. Oh, that's I, that's awful. I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah, yeah. So that's my only like personal story. The others are all observations. Mm. I went into a movie theater bathroom after the movie, um, and uh, I don't know why. Like, I think I left the movie, and I was like, I'm fine. I don't need to pee. Um, and then I like got one story down and I was like, no, I should really. So I go to this bathroom and it's like, there's no line in that one. I guess on that floor, the movies were not let out yet. And mm-hmm. I'm like, awesome. Oh my God. Oh my God. I get in there and tr- it's like a long hallway of, of toilet stalls. Mm-hmm. And on the far end, someone has smeared <gasps> liquid poop all over the I don't get wall. that. I never understand that. It was high up. So it wasn't a child, right? It wasn't a a broken it's a child. crazy person it's it was a crazy person and and i just did a stop a stare a u-turn and i was just like that's nope. ho- that is a horror movie to me and again i think about who has to clean that up yeah they don't pay movie attendants enough to deal with that no no there you have to hire a, a special service like a biohazard yeah. like a service that like deals with like hazmat service yes horror. that's like the um i mean it's it's related uh, on the Howard Stern show. They always play these, used to play these clips from this thing in Philadelphia called the uh, Wing Bowl, and it's like this ridiculous, like this it's ridiculous, disgusting mess of a event. It's and for like buffalo wings, but basically Philly would always do it because the Eagles were never in the World Series, in the Super Bowl, <laughs> World Series, yeah, yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. They weren't in the World Series Super much. Bowl. <laughs> um, they were that's never how in much the World so, Series. I know about football. So yeah, this was like kind of their thing, but now they're not since they've won, they don't do it anymore. But also, that thing, it is the most insanely racist. Oh, it's super racist place sexist, in the entire like, world. Um, but the, one of the one of the um, truly new, noteworthy parts of this um, this event were this guy, um, one of the reporters, uh, Wolfie, would always interview like the janitors and like the attendants mm-hmm. and be like, "What's the bathroom situation here?" He's like, "I can't even fucking describe." He's like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "What are we looking at here?" He's like, "There's like shit stocked on top of shit. It's just oh. like it's just everywhere." An excavation. And it's just like people are just people are just fucking animals, man. They don't care. Yeah. It's so gross. that's that sucks. And then the one that one was like obviously malicious or mental illness. Then the one that was truly. Um, uh, just neutral like someone who didn't know what they were doing because mm-hmm. I saw it happen on his face that he realized what he was doing we we <laughs> Wait, so I'm, I'm at a, a beach uh, resort in in Brooklyn mm-hmm. and um, a father is cleaning up a baby which um, has had a terrible disaster you know babies yeah, do sure. this it's actually probably quite normal but there's no female adult around and a man is doesn't know what to do and he has picked the baby up and it's like literally in the middle of like street traffic kind of thing. And mm-hmm. he just has the baby up by its like under its little arms. And he walks it over to the water fountain where people drink Are you drink fucking water. serious? <laughs> and he's dunking the baby's butt what? in the water. And then he does it one or two times. And then I see a look of realization come over his face as what he has done. And that. I'm going to play this. Do it. No, God! 
No, God, please, no. Oh no. my God, so many people no. were poisoned. So many people no. had used that water fountain <laughs> after. And I have never used a public water fountain I would, since then. Someone should have punched that man in the face. <laughs> he didn't. He truly Dysentery. Didn't know. Yeah, like all the the diseases. salmonella. Was he one of these cool Brooklyn dads? No, he was a clueless moron. He was a clueless person. He truly <sighs> was. Fucking yeah. asshole. Oh my. Because I saw that's him like that's like the same thing when time. I see people like in the park and the dogs up on the tying legs licking out of the fucking faucet. I'm like, are you serious right now? Mm. Not for you, yeah, not intended. I mean, I would take the dog licking over the fucking of dunking dirty... a baby's butt in it, like he's pumping the Fuck water button, guy. and yeah. Oh my god, what an asshole! Oh yeah, and I could tell how bad he felt after it's done. Though it is done, you unless you have some tape, like some yellow tape, and you wrap it around this thing and come oh. back later with Lysol. You Lysol, like, this is like a new fountain. Uh, yeah, seriously, you better just burn that yes, thing down. Yeah, burn it. Yeah. Just burn it. Because there's no way. I mean. And the thing is, like, no one. Oh, I hate that shit. My God, I mean, most. Oh, most public fountains I refuse to use. I use public fountains. Yeah, all the time in the park. The the water bottle. Yeah, when I'm running. Like on a summer or something? The new ones that are for water bottles, I don't mind because there's almost well, yeah. no way someone could get their yes, stupid exactly. germs but, on it. But there's one. I have a favorite water fountain in Prospect Park that I use that is, oh my God. Is it now baby I'm, butt height? Because <laughs> well, it, was if you're a, living, it was a man yeah, dunking a baby yeah, into it. Yeah, I mean, a baby, if you're holding the fucking baby up, sure. I Anything's ruined, baby I height. I ruined this for you, Dave. It's, it's fucked me up now. Oh. You know, the only place, and it's actually kind of near the park, so you mm-hmm. could use, the only place I trust the fountain, and I know this sounds crazy, is the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. For some reason, I trust the water fountain there, only because, like, I feel like they're, like, more like security minutes, guards and minutes stuff. Minutes before. You know? it's like, yeah. Ellen's like, like, oh, this one's lovely, lovely facilities. It's like, two minutes before, the baby with the his baby. asshole, like, in the fucking... That was a nice <laughs> place, too. It Ellen's was. Like, you wouldn't know. Ellen's like... <laughs> Mm, delicious. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really bad. Oh, that's bad. horrible. Really bad. That's terrible. So I have, I have People listened. People are so fucked up. It's really bad. Yeah. No. How the humanity has even lasted this long. How yeah. we made it to 2020. And that's, oh. part of, that's probably not even the worst thing has been in that water fountain. <laughs> oh my God. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You're like, like, I might throw up. This would be a good game show. Like you're like, Okay. You have to drink out of the water fountain, <laughs> and your choice is like, yeah, it's like, do you either is it? You have to guess what has been in that water fountain before. If you guess correctly, you win a prize. But it's like, was it a dog licking the fountain, uh-huh. a baby's asshole, or some homeless guy, or a person oh! like the, jerking even off when into people the put their mouth or or hands wrong on it? I'm mm-hmm. like, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. Why? Yeah. It's like uh, Parks and Rec. Do you watch that show? Yeah. Remember the episode where they're like, for some reason, everybody in town like puts their whole mouth over it. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we have to fix this, but do it as cheaply as possible. Yeah. yeah. People are disgusting. I love yeah. that show. Horrible. But what people, is wrong with people? Because they're like, oh, it's not mine. It's uh, just out in the public. I had the. I, I work at a WeWork, so I don't know who the the person who did this is not my coworker. It's a different. Mm-hmm company i'm washing my hands like a normal person and they come out of a stall i hear the stall door close the person passes behind me in the mirror i can see them and and i have heard and smelled things that make this unconscionable (laughs) they just walk behind me and just walk straight out the door yeah that drives me fucking crazy too no overture no pretend Mm -hmm. nothing no purell nothing yeah touched yeah. the door handle that now I have to touch. Yeah, there was a, there was a period of my life when I first went to New York that I feel like I was turning I was going down that road of um Howard Hughes esque like yeah. where I couldn't <laughs> not I mean it would have been great for money and yeah. not not the racism. <laughs> but um the part where he just like couldn't fucking like touch things and like he like germaphobe. Yeah. Like there was times I would be sitting in a bathroom and I'd wait until someone opened the door to get out because I just couldn't touch the fucking handle. Yeah. Cause you start thinking about like what the fuck's on that handle. Yeah. And then all the maniacs that just like, le- it's just people that touch your food when you go out. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing that I haven't become a yeah. complete germaphobe, but whatever. I have a very <laughs> strong constitution, uh, but 
I I have limits. It's and from, all, it's from I, the baby it, shit in the four pound <laughs> zone. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> it's yes. built up your system of re- your well, tolerance. Dave and I are also big <laughs> Howard Stern fans, and they actually tested some of the guys who work on this show. Their hands, their desks, their like work area for bacteria and yeah. diseases, and most of them, if not all of the guys who work on the show, had the bacteria that gives other people diarrhea. The E. coli and yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, there's another one too. Yeah, we're yeah. seeing a lot of offices yeah. like keyboards like like actual computer keyboards are like some of the filthiest things your phone your phone you're so also the steering you wheel guys. of a car and the stick shift are supposedly just disgusting germy how are you guys with the phone in the bathroom i have the hashtag swipe i mean wipe don't swipe yeah i think you shouldn't but i do do it so I do it in my own home, but I do. My own, I don't bring it to. I'm not like in, in some the public office space. One, no, I no, think no. That's no. the most no. disgusting thing. Yeah. yeah. Why is that different though? We had we our running episode. Um, two of two of the people that were in it uh, worked together, and they were saying like, yeah, they, people like are in the stalls talking on the phone. It's like so it's bad. insane. Like who's I doing hate, that? I hate that. It's I, so I can rude. barely do that when I'm in my own apartment. No. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's amazing that we again like. Echoing Ellen saying like how we've even made it this far in society. And <laughs> how we're not all dead. Yeah. 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 And, and then there's anti vaxxers out there. It's like, really, people? Yeah. I want more. the only <laughs> reason yeah. The I want only, exactly. We should be <laughs> The only That's reason we've virus. survived this long is the past hundred years we've had vaccines and it's, now they want to bring that shit back. Yeah. yeah. It's silly. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Ugh. It's just, for some reason I'm just I'm sorry, I just remembering this. This happened to me a couple days ago. I was you're, I was thinking about your um, Danish issue. Mm-hmm. My, my, <laughs> Danish my, toilet. Yeah, the Danish the Danish incident. <laughs> um, I didn't break the toilet or anything, but like I was sitting there. We might have got home from like dinner or something, and I sat down, went to the bathroom. Just I was talking to my wife to the door, or like I think the door was even open, and all of a sudden, like doing my business, and like I feel like my. I feel my dick like getting wet. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And then like I look down and the water is coming. Just, it's, I haven't, I hadn't flushed anything, hadn't done anything. I just sat down from coming out from outside, and all of a sudden, like all this cold water. And like luckily, I got up in time to turn the fucking valve the off. Valve. And then water was like, like literally, is the precipice of complete disaster. And I haven't got my auger yet, which I have to. And, oh! And Tiny reminded me. She's like, "Did you get that? You get that auger?" I'm like, "I know." But I used the plunger, and I slowly, like, you know, got the. But I don't know what it was. It just spontaneous. It just like it was just rising, and now I'm it's like, like my Davina story, the episode with Davina, yeah. my check in, and Gerald didn't flush all the way, and I'm sitting there having explosive but diarrhea, this was, and the water is touching so, my butt cheeks completely. But this was like clean. Like no one had gone. Like we, it just came home. Yeah. There wasn't like no one was, had gone to the bathroom. I mean, we hadn't been home probably in hours. So I don't know if it was just kind of weird, like this back full, They were doing something with the pipes, Ghost. but it freaked me out because I'm like, he's in a big Ghost. apartment building, so it could <laughs> yeah, be like the sewer I mean. lines from somebody it, else's. It, it fucking first of all, I was like, oh, I had well, t- to take a shower instantly. But what if real you hadn't quick, been there? That's what I said. I'm like, what the fuck? If we weren't here. This 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 would have been number one. Like, yes, 100 percent. If you weren't uh, here, but number two, it's because how many apartments are in this building? You know, at least I'm guessing at the very least half of them do flush bo- baby wipes. Oh yeah. So of course you all are in the same sewer line. True. Something's going to get stuck and it's yeah. going to fuck up other people's shit. Probably. Literally. But it was Literally. It just like I'm like is my dick touching the fucking toilet water oh, right now? What? I know my dick's not that big. So <laughs> I was like uh that would have to be I mean it'd be insane if it was like just hitting the regular like <laughs> I'm like, what's going on down it's there? A nightmare. <laughs> that's a huge fucking nightmare. And it happens. And Tiny goes, I go, what? If, I said the exact same thing you said. I'm like, what if that happened when we were here? She's like, well, that's why we have writer's insurance. Actually, <laughs> talking about augers, I bought one. Nice. And my, I'm not going to out the person. Who, I had somebody over. They made a duty, and they were like, Hey, do you have a plunger? It's not going down. And I was like, I have this better thing. It's oh called God, an please auger. Please tell me who this is after the show. <laughs> I, you don't know them, but oh, still. Um, but they, we tried using it and broke. It broke and it wouldn't work. And Gerald had to run out and get a plunger. Well, Could you call this, is a very, this is a very appropriate moment for the presents that I brought. Oh. So take a look at that because... Uh, Ellen's Ellen gonna is, open it. Ellen's got to get uh, it's, um, a green you, wrap. As, as you get emails from. Present says poops on it. For poops and farts. This do you want to go? Poops. Do you want to go this way? Yeah. 
We have one for poops and one for farts, and she's going to open poops right now. I like well, opening on video because everybody loves a good un- unwrapping video. Yes. I yeah. love this wrapping. It's literally construction paper because I had no wrapping paper. But, That's great. But I have lots of art <gasps> supplies. So it's an auger. But a tiny one. I it's we ordered a, it's a huge one. It's a baby one. auger. And it, it, it seemed flimsy to me when it arrived. I was like, Whoa. I don't know if I trust this oh, thing. I have one of those for like um, the drain. and It's the, for drains, but it also yeah. said for toilet. Yeah, I've seen those before. And are these like disposable? I think that the plastic parts are disposable, which Whoa. is that is what touches the disgusting stuff. Yeah. But the metal parts seemed very wow. flimsy to me. Well, it's supposed to like... I was un- I trust Commodore because that is one of the best episodes you guys did. I know, I need to ask did. him because like is there the plastic that on mine, mine was really big, but it had like this plastic part and you're supposed to like pull it all the way out and then shove it in and then rotate it. And then rotate it. it. Um. Ooh, look. So ooh. Some sexy, ooh, look, you could. That sounds like some like sexual position. You're like, you gotta yeah. rotate it. <laughs> look at this. It has I'm gonna a, like oh, pinch so out creepy. the poop. It's so creepy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I. <laughs> now you have we two broke. Arters. No, the other one we threw out because it was broken. That might not work. The fr- and I was like, and we were googling like, how does it work? This will just like grab the shit out. Maybe yeah. I could grab or it out of my it up. Hole. Yeah. Yeah, just I can, like literally shove this in my asshole, you're gonna ha- you're and then gonna have a Matt knife out. situation if you do Woo! that. <laughs> yeah. I know. Didn't you love Matt Knife's check in? His story was he so came epic. Out, uh, no, but even his check in. Oh yeah, yeah he yeah. like came out of the gate. Pooped my pants. Um, you want to open farts? Yeah. Okay, so now Dave is going to open farts, which right. I feel that poops farts. take a lot of airtime, right. and farts uh, get a little bit laid by the wayside on Ooh, this. I actually on this think show. I need to yeah, fart. Farts definitely while we're yeah. get a little, because uh, it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't stay with you as long. Maybe. But Ooh, this is a this? book, which I have had. On oh my, my god. <gasps> Did you, did you tell me about this? I might have told you about yeah. this. There was you an entertainer this. at the turn of the century at Moulin Rouge and in other cabaret venues whose special skill Le was... Le Petoman. Le Petoman. He is, which translates to the fartomaniac. <laughs> fartomaniac. He shook and shattered the Moulin Rouge and shocked even broad-minded Parisians. He was like Will the Farter, but back in the day. This is exactly. amazing. Oh my God, I love this. Yes. Thank you. And it's his autobiography. Awesome. And you put it on your um, coffee table so that everyone knows what kind of person oh you are. Oh my God, look at this diagram in the there back. There was this podcast it's I good. listened to that was all about like Wait, farting. There's a diagram in the back. It's a picture of him with it's little <laughs> music notes coming up behind his, ba- his ass. Yeah, um, and like the court jester back in the medieval times would be farter, and there was like this like really famous medieval farter that supposedly lived a hundred and fifty years, but yeah. they think it was actually like three or four people Ooh. who took over the fart jestering. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but he had some uh, farts are very entertaining uh, biology that allowed him to, a special control over those muscles, and he could play instruments oh my and God. suck water up into the, it. The, the little quick, a little quick, um, quick blast uh, about this book. Um, in he America Day, we call it farting. <laughs> and Le Petoman, Petoman, Petoman yeah. um, Joseph Puyo could fart like nobody else in the world before, then, or since. He could emit sounds tenderly or aggressively. <laughs> make a noise like a rapid, rapidly firing machine gun or a slow, deep roar of a cannon. He could ring out like a voice of an opera singer or blare it like a well-played trombone. <laughs> um, this is hilarious. Thank you. This is amazing. amazing. I want to know him versus Will the Farter. And quick, quick observation with the book. Uh-huh. For an autobiography, only 95 pages. He's, he was a humble man. He <laughs> yeah. was. And he it's was a great entertainer. Quick. And and he was very influential to a lot of comedians. Like Mel Brooks has referenced this many oh, times. Oh, really? The sheriff in uh, Blazing Saddles had that last name. Oh. Not the sheriff, the mayor. Yes. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Re- oh, my God. That's you so great. You need to read it and then give it to me yes. and then we'll have like a full-on review book report. Yeah, he's amazing. And like That's fart incredible. humor is... Oh, they also say that like in linguistic studies, you know, mm-hmm. like what are... How do you track which groups of humans met which groups of humans? Mm-hmm. And like there are words that are exchanged that are like similar and they include like the oldest words that are related are things like sheep, water, sheep for some reason, because I guess we talked to each other a lot more once we had some kind of agriculture. Makes sense. Water, obviously. And not even food, but 
poop and fart. It's humor hmm. grounds us and we all need to know where should I go poop in your land so that I don't like poison your water well or something. Yes. Be like, where do I work? And also farts are and the fact that fart is on that list. I'm like, that's just humor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, supposedly like the oldest joke to mankind is about a fart. And it's it, like, it should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, over a thousand years old and it's a fart. So should we list some more favorite episodes? Yeah, so my favorites, my favorite, favorite moments. I should my say. favorite moments mm. were um, tidbits. Holt's Claw's story about when he was at, he was doing a gig, and he oh had yeah, to, that was that was one of mine he had actually. A risky, a risky fart that turned into a <laughs> shart, and he had to go through an entire room full of people <laughs> yes. unnoticed. <laughs> And I felt like, oh god, there's a lot of gas. Wow, but my my room getting dressed, and I just tried to make you know, break wind, and I just shit all <laughs> in my underwear and in my suit, and like oh. I only had this one suit, <laughs> and I, I got to leave for the gig soon. Oh my god! To get to, to I'm sorry to, to laugh so to, hard. It gets worse. To get to the bathroom, the one bathroom in the home where I could maybe do something, try to salvage something here. I had to go downstairs and then through a crowd of people who were there hanging out who had seen the show the night before and wanted to talk oh, to no. us. So I had to hope I didn't smell bad and hope I could just get through them to that bathroom and then figure something out. I would love to see him animate that because the horror of someone's going to notice, someone's mm-hmm. going to notice, and then the happy ending of no one noticed he only had to throw There's that first <laughs> reaction, I'm happy to see this person. I'm like, what the fuck is that smell? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this guy, this guy shit his pants? <laughs> yeah, Matt brought it, was our very first guest. He literally like... He out of some the, good ones, yeah, plural. yeah that and that great. one, that one was my favorite. Yeah, He's, he was yeah. amazing and very educational when he talked about passing out on the toilet because of his vagus nerve. I'm like, yeah, it's something people should be aware of. He, the another one, a, a, a favorite part of that moment of that episode was the story he told about the guy that like just busted into the um, <laughs> Grand Central bathroom Central. stall. <laughs> So my friend's uncle was in uh, here in New York, and he's on the subway, and he's headed downtown like the six, and he's uh, got really bad cramps. He's like, oh, he's, gonna, he's oh, like, no. it's better be bad. And I'm hearing a crowd of the subway. I can't make it to work yet. Okay, I'm, this is going to be a, a problem. <laughs> Gets up at Grand Central, runs downstairs, all the way down to those really awful bathrooms, backs into a door, bam, pulls his pants down, and just shits everywhere. <laughs> And just bam! He doesn't even, doesn't even <laughs> sit. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So he asks you to sit down there. <laughs> then he feels a hand touch his back. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god! And he doesn't even look around. Doesn't clean up. He just pulls his pants up and runs because he can't. Feel it. <laughs> and I think if that's true, <laughs> that's a horror movie. It's a horror movie. If that's that true, is... that man couldn't even saw. He didn't have a chance to go. But there's someone in here. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no. But right now, that man. Is... <laughs> <laughs> that man is right now wandering the streets of Manhattan with old poo on him going, there's someone in here. Yeah. That's, that was one of my favorite stories. All the things he was, he was, that was fantastic. So that was the first apocryphal story. Can I tell another uh, hearsay story? That yes, please. Possibly not true. Possibly. But it is my favorite story of all. Urban the, on this show, it it's all true. Legend, Cause I don't yeah. care. Just, well, this one, it was, it has, we have a primary source and I did go back and like Google it and I'm like, Oh my God, he has been saying this for a very, very long time. Um, you know, as we know, George Clooney is it famous for being a prankster and for pulling pranks on his famous friends and stuff. And when he was very young, one of his first times in L.A., he was being put up on someone's sofa. You know, he didn't have money. His friends didn't have money. Um, it was a different time. And he was just crashing on a couch for like two weeks while he was, you know, doing the rounds of auditions and stuff. And he, his friend put him in a room that where the cat box was. Uh, so the cat would come in and do its business every night. And um, George Clooney would clean it up every like early morning before his friend got there. And so after a couple of days, the friend is like, um, is the cat scared of you? Like, why? I'm not seeing any poops in the cat box. I'm starting to get worried about her. And he's like, oh, no, I see her. She's fine. Like, it's totally fine. And he keeps doing it. He keeps cleaning up every little poop that comes in the cat box for two weeks. 
And the friend is like now like really worried. And he's like, you know, I, I, I loved having you, but I'm kind of glad to see you go. And he's like, yeah, no, I understand. Thank you so much for putting me up. And the guy goes to the guest room to, to like, you know, turn it over and clean it up. And there's a human sized poop in the cat <gasps> box. <laughs> Oh, that is so, so George great. Clooney squatting over the cat box, taking a shit, taking a human shit. That's a good one. As if it were the oh cat's two God. weeks worth of backup. Oh <laughs> my! The old Cloonster. <laughs> it is my favorite celebrity story. That's pretty of good. All time. That's hilarious. Someday maybe we'll have mom. We can be like, is this a true story? I, I believe that he would. He yeah, would he, he would. He would exactly. Yeah. He would own that. So like, I'm very impressed with like the angle and all that. Like that's uh, that's pretty fucking some, great. Some good glutes I've always wanted that. to do that actually, but that's fucking amazing. <laughs> what shit in a cat box? Yeah, it's like some, not my not my cat's cat box, but someone else's. And like, I don't not know, mine. Dude. Don't that's come over my nuts. house. Is your Still, cat like, okay? Like, dude, your cat's taking some monster shits. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I remember when my my cat box now in my apartment is in the in a closet in the kitchen, but because my bathroom's too small. But when I used to have an apartment that I could put the cat box in the bathroom, I used to be like so jealous that my cat would make bigger shits than me. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're yeah. very poop envy. Yeah, they're good. Uh, I loved Davina's story at the beach. <laughs> the the characters, the, the the arc of that mm-hmm. story. There was she really knows how to paint a picture. <laughs> there was she was both the hero and the villain at times. <laughs> you know, she tells a very very well rounded story. She's yeah. an excellent storyteller. Excellent. <laughs> The shit just flew out of my ass. <laughs> flew right out like this hot pudding like hot batch. <laughs> like poo poo and doo doo out of my body, and oh I'm my wearing God. just Drops. the skimpiest bathing suit bottoms and the tiniest fucking shorts. Like literally, <laughs> I wear those shorts without underwear, and like one lip usually hangs out, of me, <laughs> catching a breeze. It's just ugh. <laughs> Uh, fancy feast also her oh, yeah. her uh, abroad story both mm-hmm. both sides of that story of her friends echoing through the canyon <laughs> <laughs> and then the same friend being on scorpion duty with mm-hmm. the flashlight i was just like this she is such a good storyteller oh my it's god ridiculous. yeah like uh. we were lucky to have her as i'm as i'm walking down the um down the rock i hear the sound of this like horrible explosive diarrhea <laughs> echoing in this ancient sacred valley at dusk <laughs> and i was laughing so hard i thought i was like this is how i'm going to die because i'm going to slip off the rocks and fall and break my neck we were spending the night out in the in the desert in the negev and uh we had to pair up with headlamps at night because it was just super dark so if somebody wanted to go to the bathroom you'd have to take your buddy and they would have to train their headlight on your asshole because there were scorpions that (gasps) were um all over the the ground at night and they were they could potentially like bite your genitals or your asshole so oh my god she had to like <laughs> laser point stare at my <laughs> pussy and butthole again in this beautiful biblical <laughs> setting while i shit so she could look for scorpions so we kind of like I th- i'd like to think that we traded you know right favors to one another <laughs> And then uh, I loved Beelzebub, just the little one about seeing the girl between two cars in in a romper (laughs) in like one of the onesie onesies, just shitting in the street. And her boyfriend like, come on, (laughs) as if this has happened before, like. Charlotte, well, come her, on! Her episode, I really liked when she talked about that one shit that was like in the um, stairwell, stairwell for for Freddie the Pooh, yeah, forever. And we're parking the car and this very, very drunk girl who was like young, she was like 21, 22 years old. She's wearing a jumpsuit. All of a sudden I look out the window. She has her jumpsuit entirely off <gasps> and she's popping a squat on the side of the street <laughs> and she is pooping on the street and she, she was wasted and it was still light out. It's not even dark out. Wow. It was wow. like seven o'clock at night. Talking about not giving a shit. <laughs> yeah. She was 
totally. Especially in a onesie. Like, yeah, she took that's her brave. One, she yeah. took her onesie off and just pooped on the street. Wow. And her, and her boyfriend was like, come on, come on. Like, he's like, not, he's not even fake. He's probably like, <laughs> if you're doing come on, come on, you've seen this before. Oh. He's like, oh, here we go. Elmhurst is like the, like Kings County, you know, like Oof. it is. Yeah. It's like that, but Queens. So, you know, it was filthy, 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 filthy. In fact, this is, this goes with the podcast. There was a poop in the hallway, in the stairwell, when I worked there. <laughs> and I shit you not, that poop was there. <laughs> that poop was there for a year and a half. No. And it was, it here. was a human poop. Oh. It was clearly a human poop in the stairwell of the hospital because I used to take the stairs to go to my office in the, on the mobile crisis team because I'd get off the subway, walk down Broadway, go into the back of the hospital so I didn't have to wait in line to go up the elevators. I went up some other way. And the poop was there. Ugh. And I was like, oh my God, that's a poop. And then every day, I was like surprised it was still there. Oh my God. Oh, that's awful. And then one day it was gone. And it was growing mushrooms <coughs> on it. And, and when oh, it, people were tripping. <laughs> and when it was gone, I missed it a little bit. Oh, <laughs> oh um, the gear. Yeah, did you the name gear? it? It was Freddy the Pooh. Oh. That's pretty good. And that definitely was someone who worked there. That was, had to be an employee. It had yeah. to be. Malicious pooping is real. I was, I, that's never occurred to me when I've been disgruntled at work to take a shit somewhere. <laughs> I love Gigi Bonbon. She's excellent, very compelling. And she brought the farts, which I appreciate. Our live episode, she farted on Mike first, I believe. Yeah, yeah. she literally brought yeah, the farts. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. Yeah, a gem, a gem. Oh, nope. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God, I heard it. All right. <laughs> And Kyle Bonbon was one of the most informative and entertaining. We learned stuff. From the pizza box. The pizza. <laughs> Yeah, I'm box still has... confused to how he like he's and he like put his feet over the back of the chair. So I'm like, is he like bridging in some weird way? I think I think he yeah. like just had the thing, the seat cocked back a little bit, oh. and then like but the not overhang. Uh, uh, yeah, but the, so he's just hanging off, not enough where you know you're like leaning back all the way, but enough where he like can like get over that the the part of the roof and everything and just sort of like swat back on it. Oh my god! I, I was very and then awful. the idea of flinging a pizza box out of a moving car. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One time we were stuck in traffic getting through the Lincoln Tunnel. This is like, we were like maybe in our 20s or something. And we had gotten pizza for the road and like we ate the whole pie and I've always like, you know, pizza is like a pretty surefire way. Like it's, <laughs> it's a one-way road yeah. to the bathroom. And so like, you know, we'd been in the traffic for like maybe 45 minutes and I had to take a shit the whole time and and you know we'd moved like a quarter of a mile and he was like dude just go like it's okay just go so I was sitting in the passenger seat and I opened up the pizza box underneath <laughs> it and I like I re- reclined the back of the chair and like spun around and put my legs up on like the headrest and just like put my ass out over the uh, over the pizza box and just took his shit out of me. <laughs> he's such a good friend and then he's what like, happened to so- the pizza box <laughs> Well, once we got out of the traffic, we threw it out. But it, yeah. you know, it sat. But it there. sat in the car yeah. with you. Yeah. Oof, he's a, that's a, that is a good friend. Yeah, and I, especially you can't open the windows in the tunnel. Like, well, we weren't in the tunnel yet. Oh. Like we were like on the approach to the tunnel. Uh-huh. We could have like chucked it out the window, but it doesn't really jive with my yeah. environmentalist sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, you can't. That's just like a total fucking dick move. You did that. Just the, uh, but then he also was extremely informative about what if you are a hiker and in the yeah. environment what you can do he to gave us some information ethically poop in the woods that yeah. was amazing he actually uh did you see the message he sent us recently that he locked himself out yeah. of the car <laughs> while he was doing like stuff in a park because he works for the parks and um he locked himself out of the car it was pouring rain and he had to take a dump and he said well there were a lot of wet leaves around that made that easy <laughs> oh my god yep. um and you got some good ones in there yeah the the most the, if people are like into the informational side of this i would highly recommend all of the commodore's episode number 29 
start to finish information and also very entertaining gentleman. You're yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, he could shit anywhere. Life <laughs> yeah. goals, this guy. Oh, he's he's fantastic person. And all Dr. Around. Evan Goldstein on 37, very informative start to finish. Yeah. <laughs> and classy, not like, you know, some like this podcast is not for everyone. I get that. But, you know, if you just want to learn things in an appropriate way, that would be a good episode. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Evan Goldstein just like knocked it out of the park with information. Yeah, he was amazing. I yeah. Love that. Um, like the especially the anal douches that you can uh, that they're that the chemicals that they use are oh, yeah. not necessarily good for the tissues. I was just literally I he was dropping I knowledge. Was, I was like, I don't understand what I didn't. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were like, "Wait, there's a difference between enema and a douche." And I was like, "You have to listen to Dr. Mm-hmm. Evan Goldstein's episode. Yeah. Like, just that and alone is so." Yeah. If I, mean, you I didn't wanted, know that until I heard it, I was like, yeah. "Oh shit, let me think about that." Yeah, yeah, no, really, really important. And I made a list of things I have learned from your podcast. Please. I'll start with the most obvious one, which I'm kind of embarrassed I had never really thought about. I mean, I think I had heard it, but I never made it a rule in my life until you guys that very simple, just close the lid before you flush. Oh, yeah, I do that. Of course, the bacteria is going to fly everywhere if you don't do that. And I think I had known that. And it just like just every time you flush, close the lid first. Every time we have guests over... They always leave it up. It's yeah. like I, it, it's down. Oh. And then I go back into the bathroom and it's up. And I'm like, oh my God, just, just down. Yeah. I'm not going to say who, but the person we recorded yesterday, and it wasn't the last episode, but I went to pee after they were in the bathroom and even the seat was up. I was like, you're such a man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Inconsiderate. Yeah. But also just for health reasons, just shut the lid. So yeah. easy. You don't have to buy anything. That's you a, that's a single to... person right there. Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't, doesn't live with a single person. male? A single male doesn't live together with a. Uh, a lady. The biggest lesson, which not everyone still not everyone knows, never flush baby wipes. Yes. Or anything that's not from your bodily fluids or toilet paper. Those Proper are the only paper. things yeah. that go. I would like to ask the Commodore if we ever do a follow up. I will take the hair out of the drain after my shower and put that in the toilet and then just flush it later. And I'm like, I actually stopped. I stopped doing that after because he didn't say yes or no. But I was like, he was very adamant that it's like, unless it's something that came out of you or it's toilet paper, do not flush it. And I'm like, well, hair? It's not very much. I don't shed a lot, but I'm like, I'll just, I won't risk it. It's fine. The the trash is right there. Maybe you meant like just like the buildup. Because if you're doing that, then everybody else in your building or how, you know, there could be a buildup in a sense or just a a mega hairball. And the fact that the, when you use the plunger too much, it can weaken the wax seal. I did not know that. That was incredibly informative. And I have noticed at other people's houses when the wax seal is, um, old or cracked or I've been like you need to tell someone about that it's fine like for now but someone's gonna have to redo the wax seal on your toilet we just had ours redone like a couple months ago yeah so very very informative um the valve situation from uh evil hate monkey is uh, again one not everyone knows that was one of my biggest aha moments I'm like holy shit why I've never thought about that and we have both I've oh. had to use that yeah. since. I've, I've at least two or three times I've yeah. done that now. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had my own tip, which I I think maybe someone mentioned here, but like if you're in a travel situation, especially overseas or in a city that you don't know, and you need a restroom and you're looking around and you're like, ugh. Penn Station never would rather soil myself. Uh, (laughs) Starbucks, I don't want to risk it. You know, McDonald's. If you just Google hotel, it doesn't matter what city you're in. If you find a chain hotel, a Marriott, a Sheraton, you know, whatever the chain ones are, and they are all set up all over the world to be the same. So if you just walk into the lobby with purpose and walk straight past the check-in desk, I guarantee if you walk straight past parallel to the check-in desk you will see a sign that says bathroom yeah and then you just act like you know where you're going and many of these places have deals with the city that they got tax breaks if people are literally legally allowed to use their bathroom really whether, whether they're a guest or not wow that's a good thing i didn't know they, about that they didn't advertise that obviously of course. but they you know at, at most they're going to be like can i see your room key when you're on your way out of that bathroom you already did your stuff yeah they're very clean usually and it's better than risking a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks oh, yeah. in Manhattan. Like you just like. So well, just, Starbucks got in trouble, so they have to legally let everybody go in the bathroom if they're buying something or not. Good. Um, but 
we actually have a guest coming on in a couple of weeks who I think their Instagram's Poopers Guide and they are literally finding every public bathroom in all of New York City. I will. So do, it'll be a guide for Yelp, everybody. Uh, I if I'm uh, debating whether to go to a restaurant or not, I'll go to the reviews and search the word bathroom because <laughs> if it's if people have complained that it's gross, uh, if people have complimented that it's good i'm like oh now we're definitely going there excellent <laughs> yeah well there's a good tip for uh those who live in new york central park i was doing my vol- i think i mentioned this before but i was doing my volunteer for uh the 2020 um, marathon there is a uh, right near the band shell i think around 72nd street in the middle of the park there is an awesome outdoor free heated clean public bathroom down there it's beautiful nice beautiful facility so if you're out in the park you need a place to go. That's nice. Yeah. Check out Central Park. Central my Park, favorite Bryant Park. Those are the two. Yeah, Bryant Park's nice too. My favorite bathroom besides Dig In, Sweet Green, and Trader Joe's when you're in New York City is the Bed Bath and Beyond hmm. on Sixth Avenue, um, Lower Manhattan, not Lower Lower Mid Manhattan. Bed Bath and Beyond. They have it's not the most spectacular bathroom you've ever seen, but they have a bathroom attendant cleaning it constantly oh, nice. and there's like six stalls in there so there's never a crazy line you don't have to buy I, anything at bed bath and beyond a lot of times i when i see a bathroom attendant unless i really have to go i just don't go because i just something about a person in there and i'm taking a shit i would love <laughs> you guys to interview one and i would love for you to ask yeah, that's them on list. to please forgive me because when i go to the bathroom i don't bring my purse with me we talked about I that. I believe I have never tipped one. Well, possibly. a lot, a lot of, most places I go to don't have attendance, and when in the off chance that it does, I just, I'm off. I'm like totally surprised. I mean, a lot of men carry their wallets in their um their back pocket, so I'm usually prepared for that. But you know, I'm not, sometimes like you know, I'm like, I'll have a twenty or a fifty. I might have a couple of singles. I'm like, look, dude, I love you, but I'm not giving you a ten. I saw a bathroom attendant <laughs> once insane. though who had a sign. Uh, with their Venmo. I love the Venmo Oh, that's idea. pretty good. And because you know every bitch is bringing their phone into the bathroom. Yeah. 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 So you can totally That's Venmo pretty them. genius. Yeah. That's a good idea. They really should because yeah. it's not fair to me to spring this on me that I yeah. should have had $2 exactly. with me or $5. Yeah, what's the, what's the, really, what's the etiquette? I and mean, number two, at least two bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right. And if you've done something in there that maybe you like should brutal. not have. Like, yeah, ten. I think it's a dollar minimum if you go in. But if you use any of the accoutrements they have, yeah. Which it's I never more. Do. I yeah. never do. No, but I'm saying yes. if you do. Now, I got a quick question. Okay. Have we told this? In the, I'm, I mean, I can't remember if I told this on the show or not. I forgot. I can't remember the name of this bar, but I went in there. Same thing. I was like, the bathroom was really tiny and there was <clears> two stalls and a, a an attendant. And the attendant was like, I mean, like literally right outside the door. I mean, like right next to the door. And one of the stalls was just, I don't, there was like this stuff in it. You couldn't even use it. And so there's like Story one stall stuff. to go and there's a urinal outside. And so I had to, I had to take a shit and I went, I walked in there and this guy just, fu- it just threw me off for a second. I walked in, I'm like, it, what? I was kind of like, what is going on here? I'm like, oh my God, it's an attendant. And then I looked at how close he was to the actual toilet. And I mean, literally it was like, just he was on the other side of the door. And I just sat there and, and there was a small, small, I'm a pretty big guy. And there's this little tiny like bathroom stool. stall. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's just like so narrow. Yeah. And I'm in there and I'm like, I have to go so bad. And I'm just sitting there going like, I'm doing that thing where I'm trying to like parse out my shit, like where it's not like just one massive violent explosion. And at one point it's let go. And then like, and all I can think of is this guy's, in the, this guy's right. He's like literally in front of me, but just on the other side of this door. It's like the. It was, um, my, it was my worst night. One of my worst nightmares. And I get him like, and I had no money. It's I, like I that no Rob <laughs> Snyder movie where his dad is the bathroom attendant. Oh, yeah. 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 The Gigolo movie. Deuce Bigelow. Yeah. yeah. And, his, and they're like trying to have a serious conversation. Yeah. And there's a guy in the background like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but this was, at least that was like a, a decent size. This was like literally the size of like a small. New York City bathroom, but with, would, a, with two people in it. I would love for you to interview that. What is that person's day like? Yes. I want to know what Stinky. that person's day is like. Stinky. <laughs> I, but you know that... Something stinks. Oh. <laughs> you know that they're also like... If it's that small of a bathroom, if you walk in and you're a fucking pig who just like shits everywhere and walks out, that bathroom attendant knows it's you. Oh. Like, Really? Yeah. If I was that bathroom attendant, I'd be like, I know that was you acting like an animal. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, that's just like, even if you're trying not to act, not be an animal, but you just happen to be sound like one. I mean, that guy's got to go clean that up. And I'm like, it's just too much pressure. I 
I, I appreciate trying, someone trying to like get paid, do their job, do it well, but I think we can do without the bathroom attendant. It's just yeah, too much we, personal pressure. It's too much pressure on me. Like I'm being very selfish here. <laughs> of the words together, bathroom attendant, I do not need you to attend to me. Yeah. I'm fine. I got I would this. rather you didn't. <laughs> Guess yeah, but what? The, the three of us here, yes. Obviously, there are animals out there who don't. Yeah. And they need people to like take care of these bathrooms because they... People just blow that shit up. Like, I wonder if a bat, see, if we ever get one on the show, I would like I would to ask, it. what's the most amount of money anybody's offered you to wipe their own ass? <laughs> Has that happened? It, it, it must have, someone at some point must have been like, I'll give you a thousand dollars to wipe my ass for me. Oh my God. I'm sure it's happened. Which yeah. would suck because like, we talked like, about and, and that. I'm not getting up either. <laughs> um, <laughs> sitting or standing. Yeah, he's like, just, can you just squat forward a little bit so I can get my hand down there? In, um, in episode three of the podcast and the notes that I made, there's we talk about that two million dollar roll of gold toilet paper <laughs> mm-hmm. and Dave and I are like, fuck that. For two million dollars, we'll come over and wipe your ass for you. If this podcast gets very popular, which crossing fingers it does, if you want to pay Dave and I two million dollars, we will come over and wipe your ass. It is it, on episode three forty three forty. Yeah, we we have agreed to it. Oh, Ellen's agreed to that. I no, think. you did. You ag- <laughs> listen to that. The, yes, oh, you were okay, like, never mind. you were like, hell yeah, I'd wipe your ass for you. Listen to that clip. Oh. For two million dollars, I will personally come over your house and wipe your ass for you for a week straight. Sure, I can do that. I will wipe anybody's ass for two million. Hell yeah. <laughs> And for $2 wow. million, dollars, a How million I've each. Changed. I'm like, I think like maybe $4 million I did. <laughs> well, okay. Well, his price went up in a year. <laughs> no, but Might two, get even more expensive. Two, the... two, you know, like inflation. <laughs> um, I have to go to the bathroom really okay. badly. And I think it's a number two. Uh, crossing fingers. Fingers crossed. I've actually been squeezing out some silent Church but deadlies crossed. over here. But I know you're not that deadly. I keep being like. Oh I haven't God. smelled. Yeah, they, but they're coming out of me. SBDs. A little hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Thank Good luck. You. So I have a question that's... Uh, oh, sorry, real quick. Ellen's back from Ellen's the bathroom. Back. And I squeezed out a three. A three. Oh yeah. God. Congratulations. It was like a, a maybe a three inch three. Yeah. Huh. It was, it was, it was yeah, so I made quick. a turd. Jesus Christ. So it fast. was literally at my, it was prairie dogging. Like, it was there. <laughs> it was knocking at the door. I love yeah. when you guys call it knocking. I had never heard that before. That it was is my knocking favorite. on my, um, um, my, my back door, my heaven's door. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on, fuckos, let's go for a ride. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my little turd right now. So, I squeezed I out a couple it. of turds today, but nothing really solid. Yesterday, it'll, it'll I really. Come. It'll it'll get there. It's, it's literally every day is different for me. It sucks. Um, real if quick, I can make just solid, hard, great, long shits every day. I mean, you do do that a lot, but no, it's like a once a week. Oh. Since um, we only record down. once so, a week, he only gets to hear the highlights. the good ones. Yeah. yeah. Should we go into questions? Yes, yeah, go into some questions, and then. Should we talk about our a couple of our I mean, we, I, we've kind of been throwing out stuff here yeah. and there. But I covered, Rose, you're, I, it's I so fucking my amazing. Stuff. You I have, covered all I your covered notes. Stuff, oh, yeah. sweet. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should we ask some of the some of our uh, questions for Rose? Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite TP and over versus under? I am a Scott person, yeah. but, but I'm going to ruin it because I like the Scott ridges. So <laughs> it's not oh. like Scott that, that it's like, like cotton. Do you like the Scott? It's, it's less soft and uh, linty than yeah. Cottonelle, but it still has much more than regular Scott. Is it the one that doesn't have the roll? It's got the... I love the, the one without the see, cardboard. I like that one. Tiny hates lo- it. I love the one without She's not into the cardboard. It. I, I hate the cardboard. She's not into it because she can never get the... Um, the spindle yeah. on the uh, on oh, the wall. I, well, it I drives don't have her nuts. One. I don't have one, as you saw, and you guys will see on Instagram. I don't have room for one, so there is. The, it's just sitting on the back of the toilet. There is no roll. Oh, so all. you're sideways. So, so <laughs> I am nothing, but as a person, I am an under. Yeah. However, I'm a malicious under. So what does that mean? 
there's yeah. there's benevolent under which is Dave that he wants to do it for his cats and for whatever insane reasons that he has that are incorrect. <laughs> There's neutral under, which is people who just don't care. And sometimes it'll come out that way because they are just, they don't think about it, which is also insane to me. I'm malicious under in that when I go to other people's houses, if they have it over, I will change it to under. You're like me, but the opposite. You, it's like a like superhero evil villain. Like you guys have met each other's matches. I'm the evil villain version of Ellen, where she will graciously correct them, <laughs> and I will maliciously. Ma- and some people get really mad. I love really? it. Really, yeah. I just that's so funny. I'm an evil, evil person. Yes. So if if I come to your house, my my goal it's only happened once. My goal is to be at a party. Or to be, you know, at someone's house and for someone to come out of the bathroom and ask the host, has Rose been here? Because the, <laughs> the toilet paper is under and there's no reason for that in this who world. Did this? <laughs> Ma- who monkey who did, did this? The, the music stops. Wait, real quick. Who did this? Monkey <laughs> Monkey did that to me. He totally did that to me. Like yeah. he kept switching it. And I was like, the first time I was like, oh, that's weird. And the second time I was like, what the fuck, dude? And one time someone preemptively got it like they are definitely an over person and I had told them that I do this so he knew I was coming over and and I went to the bathroom and like all ready to be a brat and be like oh, I'm gonna mess up your toilet paper and it was already done and I came out of there like annoyed and he was like you couldn't do your thing could you <laughs> I was like, like to the point punch. yeah he got oh me and I'm God, like fair hilarious. enough fair enough <laughs> so malicious under is how I am oh yeah. I like yeah. those sort of distinctions yeah nice I have put a lot of thought into this okay um, if for some reason you were almost to shit your pants, would you be a floor or a pants person? I have thought of this. I feel that people in answering this question at times underestimate the panic that such situations, and I think I've been very close, but made it every time. And I'm like, I think that the adrenaline and the whatever chemicals are going through your literal body and your brain, I'm would probably shit my pants. I have never shit on the floor. I've never had the mental capacity to be like, I need to undo my pants right now and get them down around my ankles and lean up against a wall. I would and you're wearing overalls And I'm right in now. overalls. Like, <laughs> and I love rompers too. Like even if it were a dress and it was just like, I got to get my panties you gotta down. Get, you got to get the ones with the um, ass out, like in the oh, back, yeah. <laughs> the flap. The Lizzo ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love those. The long john flaps. Yes. I yeah. love those. Those are the best. A little emergency hatch. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> but I really think that if I'm like, if it's a seven and it's hot lava, I'm like, I really think that my brain would shut down. I would panic. And when I panic, I freeze. So I, th- I think you I would be a pants. Pant- I wouldn't like it. I, but I think I would be a pants person. I have been in both camps yeah. my whole life. It's I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think pants is not the preferred choice. It preferred. sometimes has happened. I think that it's that if if I did get it like keep my brain together enough to be like oh my god I made it to floor I would be so proud of myself but I'm like but I know me I know myself I think I would end up in my oh, own pants. yeah it's bad it's a, it's a no it's a situation no one wants to be in no it's not good um and any childhood um, we I grew up all over. So this is cracked me up the question. Any child like? Do you have a childhood? <laughs> yeah, just like you know, yeah. Uh, so we grew up all over, and we spent a lot of time in Italy. And they every house we had, we rented. We had they have bidets every single one, and I never used a bidet ever. And my parents didn't teach us. They're very you know American Midwestern. They never taught us how to use one. And I really regret that it's like, oh, you know, I learned Italian, I learned French, I learned all these wonderful experiences. I'm like, why did I not? Why did I not take oh, advantage? That been, that's of, like next level right there. Yeah, like that's my regret about Europe is that I didn't use the bidets Shit. when they were everywhere. Um, so yeah, but you didn't know better. I didn't know better. Yeah. yeah. And my the only fam- thing I don't like about what is stereotypically the European bidet is you have to get off the toilet and go over. Like I like these the new crab snap on. Walk. Yeah. The crab walk. Yeah. Like I like these new snap on bidets where we, it's all in one place. Well, I I can't have a snap on bidet in my apartment because, yeah, because of how close it is to the wall. Yeah. So I think yeah. a certain company is talking about making a lefty. I need a like lefty. A version of that. For but you. not just a lefty. There's the the uh, travel ones. Yeah. And there's new like electronic travel. Yeah. Ones, they have. So. Um, oh, this comedian um, yeah. Rory Scoville was doing I think he was the campaign like the head of the, uh, like one of the face of the campaigns I forget the name of this but I think I showed it to you a while ago it looks like a little like looks like someone who worked at Apple <laughs> like designed it but it's a little small 
and it just fits in the back of your tank. You yeah. Just, or you can put it anywhere, really, but it's just like, you just fill it full of water, and it's like a little electronic sprayer. Nice. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the brand, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to check that out. Yeah. Um, just about uh, my notes for our year-end rear view, mm-hmm. um, I just want to say that from episode one, I started with the no push, no wipe, so... That didn't come in episode two, three. I I up, literally up I had that one ready to go. Up the chamber. That- I like my poops when it's no push, no wipe, meaning like it f- comes out so easy you didn't even have to push. Also, Bristol- I have to make that into a little sound bite. No push, no wipe. Yeah. Um, and then Bristol Stool Chart also came in episode one. So, oh, yeah, uh, for sure. We, I'm just saying, episode one, we like, we knew lot. what we were doing. We had, we had a goal in mind. We did. You guys have been very consistent. I've been very impressed. Yes. Then also, we talk about flushing money in episode three <laughs> with our toilet paper episode, <laughs> which is still, I think, one of my favorite episodes ever the yeah. great toilet paper that debate. Was a good, we went to do, re- revisit that one with some new, newer brands. Like, yeah. Pan, we got to try Panda. Yeah. I know. We have to do like a whole wall. Yeah. So, speaking um, of products, I wanted to ask you guys about cleaning products. Oh. And maybe you ask some of your experts, like, what the best brands and what you prefer of the cleaning products to keep everything well, spick and span when, in there. When we did have a cleaning person, we since gotten rid of our cleaning person. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, that's a whole different story. But um, she used to make a lot of custom stuff. And then she would always come to us with, like, Hey, I know you're trying to like save the earth and everything, but this this one particular one that you're using, like Tiny makes like her own like special like you know extra fancy healthy it smells spra- good. Yeah, and but she's like it doesn't really clean well, so uh, if you can get me some regular like Ajax or something. <laughs> but um, we try to use like I think we use like uh, was it seventh generation stuff mm-hmm. or um, well, not, not Burt's Bees, um, Meyer, Myers. And or um, Saul Suds or uh, the other one with all the text all over it, which I'm, not, I'm flaking on the name. Oh, Dr. Bronner's. Dr. Bronner's. Yeah. We usually mix Dr. Bronner's is in everything. We have, it's in our hand soap. It's yeah. in like, you know, everything. Dr. Bronner's is a shit. Yeah. It's like kind of all purpose. So yeah. we mix it in with other things. Like I'm um, very 70s, 80s. I'm like scrubbing bubbles, Comet powder. Make a chemical weapon in that bathtub. Yeah. Don't care. <laughs> I kind of mix it depending on how bad like the, the situation is. We we try to go a little bit like you know like a lot of uh, white vinegar. Mm. We'll use that instead of like bleach or stuff like you know. So it just it really depends. But we, we try to lean in this house anyway to a more healthy. Plus I, I'm like allergic to like parabens and a lot of oh. shit. So we try to keep everything like. But I mean again like there's some things you just have to like use like the industrial like fucking napalm because yeah. that's the only thing that's gonna work. Yeah. If my nasal cavities aren't like emptied out afterwards and then I don't feel like I clean it yeah. <laughs> like there was a t- point I was using some stuff in the bathroom once to clean out the oh I use Drano every once in a while mm. which is really bad but I, I do use it occasionally when we are the cat that's no longer with us I would have to close the door because she would always just run into the bathroom and like want to see what's going on I'm like you can't be in this tub yeah because they looked their paw you know yeah no that's really so dangerous. Yeah. yeah so you know um, I use also seventh generation to clean the, the bowl with but I am curious about things like like, you know how you're supposed to switch your toothbrush every six months, your razor every certain, like with the toilet brush, what's the, the rules on how long a, a dirty, <laughs> until, disgusting toilet until brush? Until that fucking handle breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A while ago, there were the disposable ones, which yes. I thought were a terrible idea. Oh, yes. horrible idea. But then I thought about the opposite. I'm like, so what do I just keep this thing forever? Yeah. Like, that's not I good think either. I've had the same toilet brush for years, yeah. maybe even a decade. Yeah. And so I'm like, wait, that's gross. I like mean, 10 years prior. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm putting cleaning stuff on yeah. it and then cleaning the bowl, but yeah. I feel like that the you brush change. is getting clean. Yeah, just, I would just get it. Yeah, just, you're no, but I'm saying for maybe there is you a... change every two months, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Once... Well, that's what I'm saying. I haven't done that with the toilet brush. Once every six months, let's say that. Yeah, but let's I wonder if up. there is like a rule. I don't know. Should I we, have we not look, applied to any we said rule. Some, we should do some homework for the ne- next episode. Yeah. And like, yeah. We should do a little research into that. Yeah. Um, also when it comes to, um, my notes on the history of this show, episode three is the first time that (laughs) the fart machine came in analog fart machine, which I rarely, rarely use. I mean, the fart machine does come in a little bit at the end 
during you our credits. You can use the credits. anytime you want. No, but it's not about that. It's about, um, I mean, he's like my little good luck charm. But um, but yeah, I'm just saying the fart machine came in episode three. So episode one and two, we were using an app on the phone to make farts. Oh, that's right. Oh and my now, God, I forgot about it. And you yeah. got the fart machine, that's right. But now you have an entirely fancy soundboard, so... Yeah, I mean, you know. We I'm are. just saying. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, those farts are so much better than my <laughs> fart machine. The charm of the analog fart machine is a thing. Is, it's, it, it has value. It's like vinyl versus, like, you know, digital. <laughs> I mean, the fact this thing has lasted a year. Ooh. That was a good one. Well... <laughs> This fart I, machine has lasted a year <laughs> without new batteries. It has been stolen and returned to me. Yes, it's been through. That thing has been everywhere and back. Yeah. Hell and back. Yep. There's a movie in that. There I is. To, admittedly, I have to confession. I took, I wrote no notes down, even though I always love people that bring notes. <laughs> I took more mental notes. And my favorite moment started, well, there was tons of favorite moments. I love the movie episode, mm. the music one. That was so much fun research, researching all those songs and like talking about it. Uh, but I thought things started really kind of taking off around episode episode ten, Mr. Ashley. Yes, yeah, mm. that's when we first got the soundboard. Yes, and it's I'm like I think when we Ellen and I sat down, I'm like, oh my god, this sounds like an actual show. That episode was our number ten. Yeah, and that one, I mean, that one was ten rating. Oof, because we like I said before, like Ellen and I, when we first were talking about this. When we started doing this this show. We were kind of like. I mean, for me personally, I was like, I don't want this to turn into kind of weird, like fetishy, gross, like shit eating kind of thing. And then episode, she's like, she contacts me. She's like, I think we should get this awesome dominatrix on the show. And first I'm like, is this going to be? And then, which it was, but she was so eloquent. Mistress, mm. Mistress Ashley. And she was so stunning. Stunningly mm. gorgeous. And she was just so joyful about her job. Yeah, like yeah. Everything about her was like amazing. So even though there was some gnarly shit going on in that episode, <laughs> it was it was one of my favorite ones. If, if I can request, there was a moment where Ellen points out that you are literally sweating. <laughs> and I remember thinking that I could almost hear it in your voice. Yeah, so I mean, play was, that part if you can. Yeah. <laughs> I am like so in amazed by this and Dave looks a little sweaty. I mean I just <laughs> I mean I know the I know He was visibly sweaty yeah. and it was not warm. <laughs> it was just like a lot. That was a lot in that episode. But um It was no, it most definitely was a lot and it, it but it's like in the top five episodes we've done the past Absolutely. year, it's in that top five. That Agreed. one was great. I yeah. mean there was so many awesome moments, but like even Matt Holtzclaw echoing what you were saying, some of his stories were hilarious, which I mentioned before. Um <laughs> The only other note I made was in Stormy Ledler's episode. I was so excited to have our, uh, another girl on the podcast. Not that we had that many guests up to that point. I think she was our second guest. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we talk about farting in the wrong direction as a woman and how usually farts go out the back. But sometimes because you have really tight clothing on, yeah. it'll seep up <laughs> yep. through the front and go mm. through your labias. And it's the weirdest <laughs> feeling. You, uh, no man will ever know what no, that feels like. No. You might feel it go past your balls, but you do not know the pressure of it going through your labia. <laughs> no, I, I it's wouldn't. the weirdest. I don't have them. Yeah. Because, like, if you ever farted, Stormy, it's nice to have another lady on the podcast. Um, but, like, if you ever farted in clothes that are so tight that it does creep up right. the front, and you could, like, feel the fart bubble go between oh, your yeah. labias, and it's yeah. the weirdest feeling in the entire it world. Good. It feels kind of good, but very wrong. And you wonder, yeah, you wonder if you're. But, like, you good. literally feel like a bubble. And it's like, whoa, where did that come That's, from? That's, uh, yeah, I mean. That happens to me in the bathtub, too. Yeah. yeah. I can only go by what you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it's not, it, it doesn't feel right, but it doesn't feel wrong either. Right. Oh, <laughs> another favorite moment of mine, as we're kind of like getting in the home stretch of this, was Keith. <laughs> mm, very good. His <laughs> start to finish. Like top to bottom, hilarious. And even on our live episode, he came back with more stuff. Yeah. 
He <laughs> was he was tremendous. No, Keith was hilarious, but what about Bob? Bob was great too from the awesome. greatest shits. Bob I have was, never laughed that actually, hard. Actually, Ellen was I forgot about that. Ellen was dying. I literally thought I was gonna die. It was, was the kind of laughter that I like I thought I was gonna <laughs> lose Bob was my really good. literally brain. Bob from the greatest shits was absolutely tremendous. And he was another like another person. He was great in the show, one on one, and then we did the live show. He was fan- delivered. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Two years ago or something, I was making some breakfast and just had a little fart and it went through my boxers onto the kitchen floor. <laughs> wow. So it was a shark gone wrong. Pants and floor. That's powerful. I sh- yeah. So it hit the back of your pants, went through your underwear, through your pants, and then shot straight down to the bottom floor. Kitchen floor. Damn. Ruined breakfast. So. Oh, yeah. I was, I was trying to make soft scrambies too. It's like. We were just talking about that. <laughs> Oh my God! Soft scram. You you made soft scramby. Yeah, I had to clean my <laughs> diary up off the floor. <laughs> I mean, it's did, it, did it, was it one of those things where it just happened so fast that you still like holding the pan? Like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. just happened? I just gave up. <laughs> it's like it's, I know. <laughs> Emma's dying over here. If my girlfriend at the time like caught me, she would have broke up with me right then. Like, oh yeah, cleaning I mean, my shit she's up gotta, off the floor. I mean, <laughs> how do you even like explain that? You're like, wait. But it's like you're making eggs. You know what? You should go in that. It's it's. You should just go. It's. it's <laughs> what if you're making eggs and it smells farty? <laughs> you're like. <laughs> <laughs> just dying. dancing around making yeah. the scrambies you're probably so excited you're like oh my god I can't wait to eat this it's gonna be delicious whoa shit can go wrong real fast <laughs> it can go yeah he had a great story about a friend who was like holding his shit in his hand I just, it's just like it's just so disgusting but really funny dude I do I want to compliment <laughs> you each snorted, so. <laughs> I want to compliment you each in a slightly different way Ellen has one of the most wonderful laughs that communicate like pure innocent delight <laughs> yes like she's so delighted by this this thing you have brought her that she could not be more innocently happy <laughs> like a child who doesn't know or does not like she's care like a, about social standards at all she's like a kid like on christmas day running down the stairs and just like can't and, stop so excited like when she sees you all have presents. a you have a wonderful laugh that's a little bit different like you know it is so wrong <laughs> that you love it so much so you two are like like very it's well matched yeah <laughs> Yeah. There are some times where I'll listen to the episode because I, I want to listen to the episode for many reasons because I need to, I'll be like, I'm going to post that on Instagram. And then I'm like, oh shit, I forgot what I was going to post. Um, but there are times where Dave is laughing hysterically and I'm not laughing at all. It's, I'm like pure silence is coming from me. And you people need to understand that if there was a video in here, you would just see my jaw on the floor. <laughs> it's not about not laughing or laughing or be, I'm just in beyond shock at the story that person's telling me that I can't express anything out of my mouth. And they, they broker. Yeah. I literally, I'm just like, uh, my favorite those your laughs are the ones that like you're like leaning back from the microphone and then you start laughing and then or it works from reverse like you start at the microphone and then head back and you're just like just crying you're like cackling <laughs> off in the, in the into the background you did it with in Davina's episode actually yes yeah that was really funny I was just like <laughs> this is so good <laughs> and um, I really like your episodes that are you two together with no guest those are always just like it, you you make the audience feel like they're in the room with you. Yeah, it's, thank it's you. Really nice. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah. I also thought Chris Harder was fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Chris Harder was great with the stories of all the um porn mm-hmm. set yeah. issues and like how to prep. <laughs> I feel like he was on the same level as Dr. Evan Goldstein, Agreed. Miss that was Le- a great S- one. Mistress Page. So yeah, there was like a lot of um the the people who are practical and humorous at the same time, but don't try to shame anyone and like yeah. Brant McDuff with all his animal. Brant was like, that was also insanely well, educational. Brant was amazing, but the thing I used to crack me about Brant was <laughs> every part of his shit stories. He was like throwing his briefcase. <laughs> like, I don't know why it always kept sticking with me. He just kept flinging his briefcase. I'm like, what? what? I didn't. I was still to this day. I'm like, that's just okay. Weird wrinkle. Fascinating. Yeah. I love Mickey from Tushy story about her sister it was that also was brilliant. That one was um, that was a great episode because like we got to have. Her, her kid on the show mm-hmm. for like a hot second but then our she, youngest 
I don't know. <laughs> she was shot out of a cannon in the beginning, and then at the end, she was like literally almost passed out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was jet like lag from huge Australia. Arc, but it was uh, that was a great one. And our butt day, our butt sorry butt, butt con. con, yes but butt, butt con. Day. Butt con episode was like I was. We I met was, so was, many people thanks to butt con, like Dr. Evan Goldstein. Like butt con Lawrence was so great. From, Lawrence from, from Pure, Pure for, for Men, who we absolutely love. I still take Pure for Men every day. Yeah. Um, and Tracy Piper, who I absolutely, I oh. love that woman. I just want to watch the Hallmark Channel with her some Sunday and just like <laughs> cuddle with her on the couch. She is like so, and she, this wasn't on the podcast, but when we were done recording, she turned to us and she was like, this is the best interview I've ever done because you guys actually get it. And I was mm. like, that's the biggest compliment for some lady who literally deals with people's poop day in and day She's out. Yeah. Ass. yeah, she, <laughs> and she had a blast on our I podcast had a blast she did it was the best part with that episode too was like we just recorded it in like this lobby <laughs> I loved Autumn Summer's blue poop from the, the Smurf poop. ice cream mm. Mm. and then and her vacation when they um, found the shit in the turd in the, in the tub when oh. they first got to the hotel they're like, what the fuck is that smell? and she Why still has do? to get us we maybe um, she'll be home for the holidays we ought to get that picture of her first duty in the toilet her mom oh, yeah. took a picture of her doo-doo <laughs> in the toilet and put it on the refrigerator for, like for years. years like she was in high school and that doo-doo well, she was, was in still college there. I think even at one point but um, yeah that was a great one there was Jason s- Weicker and the mad shitter with yes. them, that what's, we brick think, of a what's, turd I think we found what the um, actual um, that huge brick was coming from was steroids. Yeah, steroids. steroid use yeah. people. Yeah. Steroid abuse. Yeah. It's a real, it's a real thing. Yeah, my dorm had a, a mystery shitter as well. They would poop in the um, get on top of the washing machines, the top loading washing machines, what? and <laughs> dump in there. Oh my god. Yeah. What is? I don't even know what that's called. I was gonna say upper decker. That's I don't know what that is. Yeah. That's on people's like, clothing. That's that's. It horrific. would wait for it to be running. Oh my god. Wait for it to be empty so people would put their clothes in, start oh. the machine, leave. <laughs> see, that's the life I'm talking about. Yeah, leave, and then and then the person would come by, see that no one was in there, hop in there, open the top, oh. s- squ- you know, My. perch over it, that dump in pure people. Evil. <laughs> pure evil. Yeah. That's what a, a fucking, horror movie. Yeah. yeah. That's, they, they never caught the guy. Fuck that person. And yeah. that happened multiple times? M- multiple times in the same dorm on different floors. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What an asshole. Yeah. Well, I think it was like, it was one, it was like a dorm that had multiple buildings. That's probably a lobbyist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, I'm sure he's like a very successful politician yeah. now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also, Gerald and Tiny coming on for a double. I forgot my favorite story, which was, I think it was part of Let's Get Shitty, but Gerald's story about the being in line at the deli behind the lady. <laughs> I laughed so hard. I literally, literally one of his top five favorite stories to tell. He was so good at it. And it is such a good story. I'm right behind her in line to order a sandwich. Uh Sorry. And she's, she goes, excuse me, mister, mister, mister. The guy is like, you know, making the sandwiches. So she's like, I want, a salami and mayo sandwich. Oh. I want a lot, a lot, a lot of mayonnaise. Oh. She pronounced every mayonnaise. fucking <laughs> syllable in the word mayonnaise. <laughs> and I'm like, the guy in the deli I've been going to for oh years there w- knows me and he knows I cannot stand mayonnaise. So he's like looking at me yes. like... He starts pouring the fucking mayonnaise in oh. there with like the squirt bottle, oh. and he goes to like fold the bread over like he's done, and she has a fucking fit. She's like, "Mister, no, no, no! I asked for a lot, a lot of mayonnaise. I want my sandwich wet with mayonnaise." She said, "Wet with <laughs> mayonnaise." See. I, I laughed. Which had nothing to do with poop, but his disgust yeah. of mayonnaise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I laughed so hard that the subway people were like, what the hell's wrong with this lady? And I was like, if you could hear, if you could hear, Gerald, you should replay. Uh-uh. Don't you pick that shit up, motherfucker. Shit on dollars here. <laughs> <laughs> that is my actual boyfriend sound clip. Ple- yeah, From play the dollar. Poo dollar. Yeah. Poo yeah. dollar story. Amazing. He said, yeah, he showed good. me video. Yeah. I could show yeah, you yeah, the video. Yeah, the videos are hilarious. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was um Jordan Perlson came on who yes. wrote our theme song he and he and he his was a great, travel sh- 
His whole travel shitting. Yeah, his tour poop. Tour poop. Tour poop. Tour, poop. Yes. tour yes. butt. Really good. Oh, Sean um, Pierce from the Toilet Boys. Oh my God. He was a, he was a top five for me. Like play shot the, out of the cannon. The opening. Play the opening. Yeah, he he came in like just. <laughs> We learned about sitting or standing with wipers. I know. Which, yeah. are you a sitter or a stander? I'm, I'm a very forward leaner, especially after the traumatic experience, but I, I retain contact with the seat. <laughs> yeah. But I understood, I think in that you guys were so horrified, I was like, I think I understand what that stranger in the bar was referring to. to to yeah and it maybe is not as terrible as it sounds well, we didn't find out that laura lee pants is a stander yeah yeah but she she's so adorable i feel like she could come and shit on our floor and we'd be okay with it mm, I, I, think, be okay with I, think, it. <laughs> I think that people's anatomy also difference like the whoopie pie situation it has to do with how much meat you got going back there and she is an extremely fit individual so i'm like i think maybe she's not whoopie pie in herself she's so cute though even the yeah. way she was saying it, she's like i never even thought you could sit while you watch Wait, you guys, that was hilarious. Are you guys, what, you guys stand, I guess? What was, you guys sit, what? That was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Greg Dubin's Philly cheese steak story. Yeah. The Wawas, yes. Or oh. Craig, um, Craig, sorry, Chris Clagero. Oh my God. His like, just technique of like, sort of cuffing his shorts. You're going to have to yes. come on when he does his live thing. I would love to. Oh and yeah. And we tell, retell our shitting our pants story, which my dear, lovely <laughs> co-host did not come clean with his shitting pants story until way episodes <laughs> later. Many in, many. Many. You were mad. I came out. Of sh- in my head, I thought I had told that. I don't no. know. No. <laughs> you were mad. Our accident story was like episode two. <laughs> I know. I thought for some reason I said that already. No, there's like a hair on here that keeps tickling my nose. Um, but you know, episode two, I told my epic where I pooed in public in my ba- brand new bathing suit, and then ended up my friend found my diarrhea on my shoes later. <laughs> that was the first episode, right? Second, second. First was origin. Second was accidents. Because I was like, we have, I we have to tell our shit. I can't. How did I in not? In good conscience. What the fuck is wrong with me? I thought for sure. I, you were too shy. I guess I was, yeah. But in good conscience, how am I uh, supposed to bring all these guests on and I beg oh, them to tell me their shit, totally their right. story if I am not willing to tell my own? Absolutely. I mean, in my brain, I thought I had said that. Oh, you did many time off. Like, like, I was just like, did I tell it? That I time? believe you once told a, like an adjacent story and you're like, well, you heard like the one where I did this. And then like later that same day, something else happened. And I was like, I listened to every episode, Dave Bird. <laughs> you did, and then later you told the whole story. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, guilty as charged. <laughs> uh, also, Buck Angel. Oh, Buck Angel! Such a start to finish, perfect episode. Like that one was yeah. really fun. He was. He is literally a national treasure. A treasure. And yeah, he loves poops and farts. They're so funny. God bless him and yeah. his hairy butthole. There's <laughs> been so many good ones. Uh, what I did learn, something I did learn that that apparently women's bathrooms are the most disgusting out of the two, or in this particular case, men and women's bathrooms. Well, yeah, because we have one it's more just, substance. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I didn't even, I didn't even cross, I didn't even think about that it's at bad. all. It's bad. Men have pee and poo. You guys have the we blood have factor. Blood. Oh. Yeah, it's bad. I just didn't even, th- I just, I don't know how, I mean, not that I didn't understand that women have periods, but I just didn't even think about that. And I'm like, uh, wow. Rose, uh, you are recording with us before Christmas. Yes. However, this episode comes out on New Year's Day. 2020. Our Christmas episode, I have to, we have to talk about this because of year in rear view. Our Christmas episode is about a woman named Caroline who had ass cancer. Her words. Ah. And it is also insanely educational. The things this woman has been through, God bless her spirit, her her stories. I'm not going to try to ruin it for you, Rose, mm-hmm. but um, I absolutely it's adored her. There's, there's some adored really adored her. We 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 laughed, we cried, we we did it all. We hit yeah, every emotion. I, I, she has I this wanted. epic story where she, literally she was like in the midst of really bad cancer and she's about to break down and just like lose it and the punchline at the end is just to yeah, die for yeah there's, there's, oh, yeah there's great stuff yeah so and you know then there's the smell guys like it, you know it's poop yeah so so i it happens and i just you know kind of just froze for a second and then i thought oh no 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 it's gonna smell you gotta go fast you gotta go fast so i went into the bathroom 
and I'm trying to clean myself up, and I'm in there for a long time. There's no signal I can give to, to Hervé, right? And so since it had been a long time, Hervé had a female colleague check on me, right? So I am upset because I feel like we're cutting his time at the party short, and you know nobody saw it, which was pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and so we shuffle into the car, and I'm sitting in the back seat because I don't want to get anything dirty. And we've put like we have dogs, so we put everything down on the in the back seat. And I just that was a moment. It was like how, why, you know, what what's happening in the universe that's causing this. I mean, right? anybody would have that yeah. moment, I think. Like, yeah. Especially like you know, it's just yeah. It, it was you know, it was it was a bummer. So I call my sister, who I t- she lives in California. I was talking to her every time. Uh, I mean, every day, and so I tell her, and I'm crying. I'm like, and this happened, and that happened, mm. you know, because it was it was upsetting. And she just, she's like, I wish I could just take this away, you know. And so it was kind of quiet for a second, and I'm like catching my breath. And she goes, Well, I guess now we know why the term is party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> But there was so many. Um, oh my God! There's so many awesome moments. I, of the show. I, um, I mean, Dave. I want to thank you from the bottom of my rear end, <laughs> um, the bottom of my bottom, for coming up with the idea to do this podcast. Because even if we don't get famous, the things that you and I have learned this past year has been worth every second. Well, I mean, you make this show shine, and I think that you're the perfect co-host for something that's so shitty. <laughs> well, I genuinely love shits and poops. You love shits and poops. And I mean, farts and poops. poops and all that stuff it's, in between. But it's a shit show that's really not a shit show. Exactly. <laughs> it, it well, could I, be. I decided for 2020, our new tagline is going to be, we are Hey Poopy Podcast, laughing and learning about everything but. I love that. It's pretty good. I love that. Everything but. Because it's not everything but yeah. Because we're not just a poop and farts podcast anymore. We've learned about <laughs> we're a health and humanities class. <laughs> yes. It is. <laughs> it is because humor underlines everything about us, especially about what makes us human. So mm-hmm. you guys I mean, are- I can't even believe we've been doing this for a year. It doesn't even seem like it's just. I mean, it's kind of nuts. Like it's gone this quickly. Like, well. and I, the first four episodes we did. Maybe even longer than that. Maybe five. I don't think I even listened to them because I was so nervous to hear. My, <laughs> I couldn't even. I, the sound of you hear your own voice. It drives you I fucking crazy. It. But it's like now I'm just so used to hearing. You know. I sounded. Us two. I feel like in that first episode's more nasally. I sounded. I think a little Sarah Silverman ish. Mm. I think I, you could hear like when I replayed the episodes to make some notes. Mm. Those first three episodes, you and I are nervously laughing through the entire <laughs> thing. Right. Like we are so like I cannot believe we're talking yeah, about this. Is this. happening? Yeah. But also I'm telling you, technology, having yeah. a soundboard really oh, yeah, does help. You've upped the game in It really makes technology. everything a little bit uh a little bit easier. Yeah. Not a shit show at this Here shit at Hey Poopy <laughs> HQ. It is a shit show, just not a shitty show. Mm-hmm. Um I was thinking we could buy. I don't know. I just feel like we have a, this is a good fun episode. I wanted to bypass the let's get shitty because I didn't want to. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We I didn't want to take a turn into like I'm going to complain about something. I had to cook something up because I was like I don't really have anything. Yeah, We're good. And I'm just so new happy. year, new year. Yeah, it's a new year. I'm so happy about like you know this is more of like a celebration than anything. Else. But yeah, talking about new year and um, Rose, you can bring one to let's do our New Year's resolutions when it comes to poop. My New Year's resolution is I want to make us both one of those signs so we can like while we're sitting look at it like I'm thinking needle pointers cross stitch so we can have our good intentions. I got to remember every time I pinch out a turd I want to flush down the negativity and bring in the positivity. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so my New Year's resolution is to use the book Deja Poo, my poop <laughs> journal that Ellen gave me for the Christmas episode. So my first entry was at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it says, description, and I wrote, shit, <laughs> type, smelly, color, doo-doo brown, consistency, it's shit, <laughs> and then I wrote number three. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah. So I got to keep... It has, why track my poo, constipation, diarrhea... Bristol stool chart and then all this. 
That's nice. Cute, that's right? Yeah. yeah, so I got to start doing that. That's, that's I got to track that's my good. poops. Yeah. Rose, <laughs> do you diet. have any poopy um, New Year's resolutions? I think it would be more diet related. Um, I sometimes make uh, kind of conscious decisions to eat things that I know will are not going to be worth it. You know, I, I believe that food is one of the most pure joys of life. Oh. And One of the um, biggest pleasures. And I don't deny myself anything. I mean, thankfully, I don't have like celiac or anything like that, but I don't eat most breads or cakes and things. And it, if something is truly wonderful, I will allow that for myself. But if something's just like, I just am trying to cover some other mood or something like that, just don't do that. Just don't do that. Your poops will suffer. It takes many days to recover. Just be more conscious about what I put into my body, uh, more whole foods. More fiber. more fiber, healthy fiber, find the right balance. I mean, my poops are still great. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, they are. You're like, um, ding. <laughs> but just be a little kinder to my insides. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, with those awesome well intentions and resolutions, mm-hmm. I wanted to thank Rose Martin for coming on the show. Yeah! And being a fantastic Actually, you were coming over a co-host, really, yeah. than anything, correspondent co-host. And I want to thank you for these amazing gifts you yes, guys. Yes, thank you. They're so thoughtful and amazing. I'm so grateful that you guys had me on. Incredible. Very pleased. And uh, anytime, you're welcome anytime. Please keep giving us more news <laughs> stories. You got it. And all that stuff. And we look forward to talking to you more. Yay. In the future. Yay. We'll have to year in rear view it for 2021 next year with you. You know it. Yes. yes. And thanks to all you listening out there. Uh, 2020 is going to be a big year for us. We have a lot of cool, fun things in store. Double deuce. Double deuce. Yeah. Our year, and re- um, our year anniversary is coming up in a couple weeks and like three more episodes. We have a really fun. And we have a, an extreme yeah, extreme episode. Yeah, Teaser. can't wait. Yes, that's yes. all I got to say. It's extreme. Yes, and hopefully it'll be pretty fun and informative. <laughs> oh my god! We'll see how it goes. Woo. But um, until next time, we'll talk to you and be seeing you soon. Happy pooping, everybody! And toot toot toot. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to Hey Poopy with Dave and Ellen. You can listen to us on platforms like iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and even YouTube. Subscribe and rate and review and tell all your friends about us. For more info about Hey Poopy, go to heypoopypodcast.com. You'll find great links on our merch. We have some really cool merch, by the way. Shirts, mugs, cards, bags, all kinds of things. If you have any questions, product reviews you would like us to do, just general emails, we just want to say hello. Email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com. And you can also go on Instagram and check us out there at heypoopypodcast. You'll see all the fun toilet pics, anything fart and poop related. So if you have any extra submissions you want to you know, show us or things that you think are funny, just let us know and we'll, we'll post it for you. Theme song by Jordan Perlson. Hey, poopy. <laughs> Oh, that one's gross. <laughs> Very wet. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Hey, Poopy, how you doing? I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things about me, about poop and stuff. Hey, Poopy. Oh man, what's this right here? Is this, is this a podcast about poop?